Y'all used to hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. That used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. Y'all used to hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. That used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. The podcast. TRP Nation, we back. Reporting live from Focus Studios, shout out to uh, our guy Kyrie Terrell, actually just had him on the phone, Yeah, uh, letting him know that, you know, we're here invading his space once again. Um, I'm here with a familiar face, somebody y'all should know from the platform. He is a returning guest, uh, coming back after a magnificent appearance in January, we gave a master class on business, entrepreneurship, publishing, and scaling. And he helped us to properly set the tone for 2024, more importantly. He also set the record straight on some high-profile public figures, gave a synopsis on the state of black culture and the world at large. Welcome back to the platform, serial entrepreneur, multiple-time best-selling author, motivational speaker, and business coach, and my friend, Mr. Dave Anderson. Wow, bro. Like, I'm telling you, man, I'm just going to take you on the road with me, man. You <laughs> I'm know, available. I'm, listen, I, I'm doing a speaking tour. You need to bring me up. You you intro me like, bro, I feel like I'm five seconds away from getting on Club Shay Shay with that kind of interview. Like, listen, I'm uh, on the way. You were with us uh, the end of the year slash beginning of mm-hmm. the year. Uh, mm-hmm. Since then, you know, we talk, you know, constantly. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, number one, thank you for making yourself so available yeah. um, to, to me, to Dan, to the platform. Uh, being a true friend to the show, yes, sir. supporting us, um, lending us your opportunities, your economies, all of that stuff. Uh, I want to let you know nothing goes unnoticed, and I super appreciate that. Man, that means the world to me, man. I tell people all the time that the greatest gift I ever get is people recognizing that I actually did contribute to what, what they got going on, man. Like, Absolutely. I'm, I've never asked you for a dime. I never, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, to me... I'm just, I'm grateful to be in a position because it wasn't a whole lot of people, you know, when I was trying to figure this thing out yeah. to, to, to help me. They'd be like, oh, you know, just just keep your nose to the grindstone. <laughs> it's always darkest before the dawn. I'm like, you're walking Hallmark card. Can you give me a connection? Yeah, yeah like, they hit, you, hitting you with all the fucking contrite responses. It's, like, all it's right, always man. darkest before the dawn. Like, no, nah, man. So I, I appreciate that, brother. I'm yeah, so proud nah. of y'all. That live event, man. Oh, uh, man, it went up. It went up, man. Uh, shout out to to, to to Noto, to Dre Ali for, you know, helping to facilitate that event. Uh, my, uh, I don't even know what to call Raj. Raj is a, literally, he's Roger Christmas, he's a childhood friend of mine. We grew up together. Um, but he does all of our graphics and stuff like yeah. that. So every logo y'all have seen, um, every logo y'all have seen since uh, the second iteration, Rod did the first one, but every logo y'all have seen, all of those funny graphics and stuff we yeah. put out accompanying episodes, uh, the Dave Anderson, all of that different stuff. Raj creates all of that, but then he does our uh, screen. He's our screen man for nice. our live shows and yeah. stuff. He got pictures, like childhood pictures of me and Matt from our families and <laughs> had them running on the board. It was so funny. Dangerous it was man so right funny. there. Yes. Shout out to Raj. So, so similar to kind of what you and, you know, when so you talking about, you know, you and Mark's show, what yeah. y'all were doing with the pictures and all of yeah. that, and you don't know. Yeah. Like, and I'm just like, that's a television show. Like that's yeah, that's a series absolutely. because you know the unpredictability of like having to explain these old photos or the moments yeah. or the stories behind them is uh something that's easily monetizable, especially somebody as yeah. mammoth as him. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. He's the world's strongest man. He's a great guy, absolutely loving to death, man. So, you know, good times. Yeah, definitely. Uh we were with you uh for Mania. Yeah. Uh, we we went to Remix Rumble. Yes, Crazy. Sir. Insane. Uh, insane. Got a pop-up interview there. Yes, uh, we came to Bust It Open yeah. Saturday. Yeah. ECW Arena. That yeah, was man. crazy. Uh, Koa, uh, the energy drink was out there. Yeah. They had the bus outside and yeah. all of that. Yeah, Zoe Energy. Shout when out we to rolled folks. up, a uh, little kid was uh, telling his parents, he's like, The Rock is on there. I'm telling you. (laughs) And I'm like, that's the power of marketing. Like that visceral reaction from this Mm -hmm. six or seven year old kid. That's that's the power of, you know, powerful marketing. Right. The thing of it is The Rock in and of himself understands the importance of not only touching the people, but keeping people on a journey for a very long time. Yes, absolutely. Even if you look at what he did, you know, with the Cody Rhodes situation, he was like, just sit back and, and enjoy the journey The Rock is taking you on. He understands the importance of a long-term play. The only person or only entity I've seen do it better than Dwayne The Rock Johnson is McDonald's because there are adults to this day who will tear down a Big Mac who grew up on Happy Meals and mm-hmm. McNugget Buddies. Yeah. You know, like that's the type of energy you want to have. You want to have a long-term 
relationship with your audience so that they grow with you. Exactly. Because they've had to grow with him. Yeah. And Zoa Energy and um, Papa Tui, all these things that he's doing now are absolutely phenomenal. And people have to understand the importance of leveraging your brand as opposed to just doing, you know, quick little hits, quick exactly. little hustles, side hustles. Let me grab this quick two grand here. You're stepping over dollars to pick up a penny to pick up a penny and that's a horrible thing to do and when my clients do that i, I just i'm like yeah that that's not me <laughs> i yeah. can't help you with that what type of um structure do you try to uh you know i know every situation is different sure but what try, what type of like foundational structure do you try to put in place with um a wrestler, mm -hmm. a radio personality or whatever sure. from day one to ensure that those shared values are there so that they're not chasing short-term plays that may mess up the long-term real, you know, money and right. real opportunity. Phenomenal question. Everything. I don't care if you're a rapper, a wrestler, a singer, um, a radio personality, it's all the same. Yeah. Everybody, when they see you or they see your brand, ask three fundamental questions. Who are you? What do you have? Why should I care? Right? People have to know who you are. Yeah. They have to know what your offer is, and they have to have a reason to get behind you. It doesn't matter that you're the best. It doesn't matter that your product tastes better. It doesn't matter if you're the best singer. You and I can name all 30 people who can sing Beyonce under the table, but none of them make people mute in, in a 30,000-seater arena. <laughs> exactly. So you have to get them to care. If you're missing one of those three, you're screwed. So we start from that foundation. The next thing is we have to figure out exactly what it is you want because I never – manage a client or become an agent for an artist based on my particular wants, I do it based on what their goals are. Because one, my standards are absolutely insane. And number yeah. two, I want to make sure that you are invested in this. You have a vested interest in seeing something to fruition that you believe in. If you don't believe in it, you're not going to do it. It's like chores for for my nine year old. Yeah, you know, if you if I say, "Yo, we going to Peppa Pig World Tour," oh, bet I'm in. We're gonna see Garfield. Yeah. The movie. What I gotta in. do? What All I right. gotta do? But if I'm like, "Yo, I, I I need you to feed the dog," All right, Dad. <laughs> You know, and yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. So I want you to be passionate about what you have. And even if you have an idea, it is my job as an agent, manager, um, content manager, director of sales, whatever position I'm playing for you, yeah. to take what you have and enhance it so that you're not missing any money. Most people, even multimillionaires, even people who are on Wheaties boxes and covers of magazines and on TV, they miss out on so much money because you cannot see the picture clearly when you're in the frame. Right. And it's my job to make sure that those foundational questions are answered and also to look for every opportunity in what they say they want to do and what they haven't thought about yet and how to monetize everything. So that um, one, of my, one of my dear friends is a guy named Akbar Sheik. And he has a philosophy. He's a business coach like I am. He, his philosophy is make more to give more. You can't help somebody right. <laughs> if you don't have a bread, right? Yeah. Steve Harvey told Monique, and it's the only good thing about that interaction he had with Monique, he said, the best thing you can do to help the poor is not be one of them. Yeah, uh, Jim Jones, once uh, the rapper told David Banner something like that, which proves a prolific point can come from an unprolific person. Uh, he told David Banner, Yo, the best thing you can do to help your people is to get money. Like, that's, that's the best thing you can do because if you have access to capital, you can help create economies of scale and create opportunity for other people. Yeah. It's as simple as that. You no. got to make money. And it's the truth. And I, I'm going to tell you, man, like, Banner's one of my best friends. He has a heart for his people, unlike anybody I, I know. Like, And, like, he made me focus even harder on my people and yeah. what that means and, and providing opportunities and things of that nature. And... I think a lot of people take him for granted. They don't understand yeah. what, you know, what he does. Like th when I tell you when you look at people who score films, when you look at people who put things in 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 place for companies, like this dude has done soundtracks for the Olympics and you wouldn't know it. Yeah. Like his his impact as long as the man has done 26 films to date. Holy shit. See what I mean? Just like that. Shout out to David Banner. Man. You know, and, and and that's the thing, man. So for 21 years, I have had the pleasure of having that man as, as a surrogate brother. And when I tell you he hasn't even scratched the surface, he's in the top of the third yeah. in, in his career and what he's going to accomplish. But he's also big enough to understand who he is, but still 
human enough to understand what he does not understand. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can't say enough good things about him. Uh, I want to ask you a question that I think is going to set us on the trajectory of... <laughs> Why you look at me like that? Because you're trying, you're trying to get me to get out of the nice, normal Dave Anderson tone of I'm voice. I'm going to ask you a start question. snapping on I'm people. I'm going to ask you a question Here that I comes. think is going to set us down the trajectory of all of these things because I feel like they're connected uh, via energy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dark, aggressive energy in the air mm -hmm. around the year. And I think that Something that set it off was the Cat Williams interview sure. on Club Shay Shay. Absolutely. So this is a two-part question. Okay. And I love talking to you because I could throw you a nine-part question and you, you're, going, you're not going to skip a, a, a beat. Never. Uh, one through nine. Just, all right, so, all right, so then eight. Like, you, you have a very, you have a way of answering questions. So my question to you is this. Okay. How do you feel about the interview, mm -hmm. number one? And the way it set off the year with the exposals, the mis some misinformation in there, mm -hmm. what people might call tearing down other celebrities mm -hmm. in the name of telling the truth, mm -hmm. and then juxtapose it against the energy he had on Joe Rogan's interview and how starkly different those two pieces of media are. Okay. So that's a loaded question. So let me give you a very loaded <laughs> answer. A lot of times, um, there's a theory online that says that Pennywise and Mary Poppins are the same type of creature. One feeds off of happiness, joy, togetherness. The other feeds off of fear, right? Um, I'm of the mind that we love fear, like we love ho-hos and donuts and uh Chicken wings. Yeah. We love us some lemon pepper, don't we? Um, I think what has happened is the comedy game has gotten really, really messy and really murky, and it has for a very long time. Yes. Uh, unless you're Andrew Schultz, and shout out to my bro, Andrew Schultz, unless you're one of those types of comedians or you're a Corey Holcomb who does not give a warm bucket of hamster vomit. Yeah, because he's just, know. Corey Holcomb's on an island. Right. He's on an island and by he's, himself. And he's so happy there. He's so happy there because he, he tried, he, like Patrice O'Neal, mm. tried to play the game and he got fucked Absolutely. playing the game. So yep. he said, you know what? Fuck this! I'll just go over here, take my ball and, and go, home. and be an underground king mm -hmm. and be the Godzilla of this island over here, and let y'all fight for this imaginary throne that is over here. And he's right. making a lot of money, yes. and he has a core audience right. that supports anything that he does. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he's comfortable in it. Most importantly, yeah. like he's settled into who he's supposed to be for this time frame of life because it's not a new phenomenon right. with Corey. It's it's been going on for eight or ten years now. Right. So here's the thing. Corey Holcomb is as necessary as Cat Williams is, right? And let's not act like they did not do a job on Cat Williams. See, if they can't get you to sign up for whatever they're pitching, and you yeah. can take that from whatever I'm 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 hinting at, um, they will either kill you or they will make you look crazy. Slander they'll, you. They'll, 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 they'll throw you in jail. Yeah. Right? Cat ain't never been you know, convicted. Of no, <laughs> so he's not going to prison. He's yeah. been in jail a few times, but he ain't going to prison. Um, and so when he tells the truth, it's like what they did to Dick Gregory, you know? And I, I've been in the comedy world since I was 19 years old. Yeah. You know, started. That's why the, I asked you, because I know you know it. Right. You, you know the inside. And again, I'm not sitting up here saying that, you know, anybody's coming to see me you know, sell out the Wells Fargo Center. I'm not on that. What I am on is I've written for a lot of folks. I have dealt, you know, with a lot of top tier comedians. And the thing of it is, you know that there are a lot of truth to what Kat is saying. Yeah, for right? sure. And the other part of that is because one of the things that I loved in your comment section, people's like, well, he's a Mason. He's in the Illuminati. The Illuminati uh, are not the Masons. I promise you. Yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, Do you think that the there is a presence of the Illuminati in this elite class and, like, 
skull and bones and all, is that a real thing? Uh, Not the, to get conspiracy the, the, theory. No, to the that. skull and bones are a real thing. Uh, you know, you can trace that down to presidents. I mean, there are powerful people in a bunch of positions, but the real people that that hide in plain sight are in every major city. They have a big old shining building. You know who they are. I'm not going to name their names, yeah. but you know who they are. I know are. who they are. And, and you've, you've, you've seen them, and you've seen their impact, and you've yeah. seen what they can do. The problem is people don't ever want to deal with that, and so we create this narrative of things that you can't Of these touch, hidden figures. Right? And, and a cabal. Yeah. And, I mean, there are cabals, but the cabal that you're paying attention to ain't the cabal you need to be paying yeah, attention to. that ain't the one to. that's in, actually that, that in ain't control. The one. And then there's another one outside of that one <laughs> that goes and says, if you say anything about us, you're anti whatever that is. And because of all of those things, Cat is at a point in his life where even if you try to stop him, you can't. He has too much um, goodwill with his audience. That's it. And it's his audience. It's his audience. I don't see these people show up in other time periods of the internet like when he has he has these lapses off the internet mm -hmm. like you remember when instagram was like at its peak yes and then cat wasn't on instagram at all. at all he didn't have a corporate page then he just showed up on like some random page one right. day yeah. and then he's like going live and this and this and this yeah. and it ignited this whole almost like a sleeper cell of forgotten people mm -hmm. that are not representative at a Dave Chappelle show, at a mm -hmm. Kevin Hart show, at a, even a Corey Holcomb show. Right. He doesn't have a lot of crossover in his audience mm -hmm. to other comedians. Right. They're Cat Williams fans. fans. And that's it. And see, the thing of it is, if you can't buy somebody and you can't break somebody, then you start to nitpick at their credibility. Yeah. And I think that's what's happened there. Now, the other part of that is you have to put in certain levels of marketing and certain levels of sensationalism in order to get people to watch because human beings, and I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, the majority of Americans are absolutely stupid and that's not coming from an elitist place. This is a fact. Stop me when I tell a lie. The majority of news broadcasts are written, meaning the copy on the teleprompter are written at a fifth grade level. The newspapers are written at a fifth grade level. Yeah. Magazines, fifth grade level. Yeah, we're a nation of C minus and D plus students. Okay, then. So let's not act like we're so intelligent that we're not easily influenced and manipulated. Yeah. Right? That's why I don't need to I don't need to shove drugs in the community like I had to do in the eighties, because the drug yeah. is right here. Yeah. And you're getting your fix. You're getting your dopamine, right? And you believe whatever the headline tells you, no matter what the headline tells you. And you don't question it and you don't ever look at it from a deep perspective. And then because... Yeah, it's, like, it's like, why are headlines written the way that they are? Why is certain ad copy delivered the way it is? Because it's it's being used to activate certain emotions and endorphins and mm -hmm. uh, serotonin and stuff like mm -hmm. that in us to get us to do something, whether exactly. that be uh, watch another video, mm -hmm. buy something, yeah. click this advertising. It's trying to elicit a response yes. from people, and it's all directed and very, very intentional. Absolutely. Not to mention, fear sells a lot more than positivity. If you look at the average news broadcast, and y'all can argue me down, but keep in mind, I've been in media since I was nine years old. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the average news broadcast, the last story is always the positive one. Yeah. Every other story is 15 people were raped, murdered, killed, and resurrected and brought back and killed again by a rapist who's nine, nine years old and shot 15 people on his way to a Bigly Wiggly. Yeah, journalistic, part of journalistic um, standard is if it bleeds, it, it leads. leads. So whatever is the most fucked up story of the day or the most sensational, mm -hmm. that's first. Yeah. And then whatever falls, as there's a hierarchy down. And then at the end, oh, we got some, you know, somebody got 92 puppies and right. <laughs> like they had, they had a, right. they had a, a, a doggy uh, barbecue or whatever. Yeah. All, isn't it so cute? Yeah. Because it's like, Shit is fucked up. Is is the world is ending? It's it's terrible. But we got these nice dogs, Look and it's like puppies. it's gonna be all right. And come back tomorrow. It's so, it. where it's like all it is. Shit ain't so bad after all. Look at the puppies. Like <sighs> puppies, <laughs> and that's it. You remember the first thing and the last thing. The first thing is there to get you. What's in your apples could kill you tonight at eleven. <laughs> If, in fact, apples could kill you, if you ate an orchard full of apples, it's the seeds. There's a tiny amount of poison in the seeds, and you'd have to eat like an orchard and a half full, yeah. which is a statistical impossibility for any human being. Maybe Dan. I don't know. Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. See? There we go. He's not Dan even Dan. He's like, Dan Dan's like, Dan's good. <laughs> so, but... If I tell you that, and you're like, oh, shit, I got to watch. What the fuck is going on with the apples? Yeah. Right? 
That's they, the po- whole thing. they poisoning the apples. They poisoning the apples. It's Snow White for real. <laughs> it's Project Snow White. Let's get on TikTok and find out what the experts say. <sighs> so Cat Williams is necessary. People are now lashing out at Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp? That's who you want to lash out at? Let me say this, because I have thoughts on Shannon Sharp. Let's go. Shannon Sharp mm-hmm. has stayed, and, and keep in mind, it's not a new fucking podcast. Skip. This, this, this shit's been around for three and a half or four years now. Yep. Club Shay Shay is not a new podcast. When he went to Fox, part of his strategy was that they would help him build verticals outside of just being a sidekick to Skip. Club Shay Shay being one of them. That's Nightcap right. came later. Yep. Um, so this is a very uh, pronounced, intentional platform. He had a right. million subs before Cat even touched the platform. That part. Now it's gone to, you know, a whole nother level. Um, right. But Shannon stayed present in the market long enough to mm-hmm. see himself go from being celebrated to being villainized. Absolutely. And all it took was him platforming the wrong person, mm-hmm. which ended up being Amanda Seals. <laughs> and that's when the pendulum swung yeah. from because hey, it was it, it was, was like it's like this. Watch this, right? They went from being happy to see you to what the fuck you doing here? Listen, Friday, man comes into Jerusalem on the back of an ass and they go, <laughs> Hosanna, Hosanna, and they give him palm leaves. <laughs> Next thing you know, <laughs> crucify him. Yeah. That, that, that's just what that is, man. Um, yeah, so Shannon, Shannon stayed in the market long mm-hmm. enough, and it only took about four and a half months mm-hmm. for them to say, nah. To where it started to be some audience backlash. Because sure. in between, when that pendulum swings, mm-hmm. it's, it's if, as fast as it may seem, it's more uh, timely and structured than you may think. All right. you see is the boom, boom. Right. But there's something that goes on in between that creates that motion. Of and course. what started to be was the outside narrative mm-hmm. of Mike Epps and people mm-hmm. that were having like these little Steven Jackson, people yeah. that were having these clashes with him mm-hmm. over his editorial mm-hmm. and the, the leading questions and stuff sure. like that, right. where that started to be a thing. And then once we got to the Amanda Seals moment, <laughs> we just had a fucking car crash Absolutely. at 75 miles an hour, sure. you know, going head on. Yeah. What is it about Amanda Seals that is so polarizing And so it's almost like as smart as she is, she's a brilliant woman. Absolutely. She's smart as a whip. She's gorgeous. What is it about her that makes her so incorrigible to audiences where there's always, no matter what she does, Mm -hmm. there's a visceral response Mm -hmm. to it every time. Right. Um, Are we missing something or is it just, is that just her? Like, is she just a troublesome person the answer is yes you're missing something and it's just her okay so the the first part of that is right a lot of people right specifically black women tend to identify with amanda seals because she's accomplished and she's got these degrees and she has this career and she's done all of these things and she's a phenomenal Uh, (laughs) stand-up i'm give me any dan i I, give you 10 grand right now give give me an amanda seals joke you love yeah. I would love the 10 grand. I cannot. Thank you. So you also have to understand um, that sometimes, and I get it, I'm a polarizing figure. People yeah. don't like a lot of the things that I have to say because I Just turned in a uh, Peso Pluma concert. <laughs> <laughs> People don't like a lot of the things that, that I have to say, and, and that's okay. Um, I will say that the one thing, and I'm going someplace with this yeah, yeah, one yeah. thing that ricky, one thing that ricky smiley taught me that has stayed with me for the last 15 and a half years is that when something keeps happening <laughs> you have to look at the common denominator yes absolutely so marcia ambrosius who in my interactions with her has always been professional gracious sweetest pie dan knows her dan knows marcia very well oh nice yeah um sweetest pie like She had some issues with Amanda Seals. And let's face it, Floetry 2.0 went went over like a lead balloon balloon on Mars. But that notwithstanding, Issa Rae, Black Hollywood's darling. Yeah. Problem with Amanda Seals, right? 
by proxy, allegedly the cast of Insecure and the person sitting to you on your right yeah. has had run-ins with Amanda Seals. Various security guards across Hollywood have had run-ins <laughs> with Amanda Seals. And I, I will talk about my experience because I don't like to deal in hearsay. So let's mm. deal in facts. Oh, exclusive, and if, exclusive. And if anybody would like to question those facts, I have no problem submitting to you the tapes. Yeah. But. She did a live once. And keep in mind, up until this point, even though I knew certain things and know people who have had run-ins with her, I don't base my opinion of you on anything other than how you come across to me. You approach the uh, interaction in earnest. In earnest, all the time. So she did a live, and she was asking, why is it that black men are withholding their vote? And she asked for people to come on. I, being who I was. Threw that hand up. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Because, again, I'm a fan, right? And so she gets on the thing. She says, why? And I said, well, you have to understand, Amanda, for me, it's a situation where I think we deserve tangibles. Black people have built this country. We need to get something from it other than benign neglect. And what has happened was, and keep in mind that I'm a person that has met four presidents prior to Trump, yeah. sat down with uh, Janet Reno to talk about you know race relations, all types of stuff in my career just because of what I've been able to accomplish. I've been in those rooms. I've been yeah. to the White House. It's not, you know, a crazy thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm not coming from an uneducated place. Um, I'm also the son of a person in law enforcement. So I understand, you know, government on a different level. Yeah. You know? Uh and so when I say this, I said to her, we need to get something for our vote. This country is set up in such a way that we need to make sure that the people who are representing us are actually representing us and not lining their pockets because showing up every four years and doing the nay-nay and having an exclusive Vanity Fair <laughs> sit down with Cardi B has yet to benefit the black people who statistically do not have $500 in their pockets in case of an emergency. Yep. And she says to me, well, that's not good enough. You got you to gotta vote. You got to vote down ballot. It's, this is the, crit- the most critical time. I said, that's funny because it, it was critical when Mitt Romney was running against Obama. It was critical critical when um john mccain was running yeah it was critical when al gore was running it's always critical but Yo, let me thing, let me ask you this not to cut you sure. off why do super progressive liberal leaning people always play the it's the most critical election like you can't that's like the boy that cry wolf you can't play that card every election and then still, then we come out and vote again, and y'all don't give us nothing. Then we come out and vote again, and y'all don't give us nothing. Mm-hmm. You can't play that card for, I'm 41 years old. Mm-hmm. I've been able to vote for the last, what is that? Uh, 23 years? 24 20, years? Yeah, 24 years. Yeah. So six election cycles. Correct. My quality of life has slightly varied. Correct, depending from, on what's depending going on. on the, but, but to add like I'm like slavery's coming back if Mitt Romney or Trump or whoever gets into office is just like how why do we deal in such emotional extremes because and, and dishonesty because number one the people who are surrogates are paid very well to do that there's always been some Negro agent or agents yeah you know even Malcolm X talked about that Right. The other thing of it is people love, especially black people who say they're so pro black, love to talk about how militant Malcolm X is. But Malcolm X also warned you about the the white liberal and his agenda. Yep. And if the white liberal um, pulls the if the knife is six inches deep in your back and he pulls it out three, that's not progress. Yeah, that's not progress. Right. He's not even addressing the wound. And so with that. It's easy to, again, mobilize people on fear. And if you really wanted somebody to vote for you in a real way, not just in a a surface substantial way, you would say, okay, I know for a fact that the average black voter does not understand people's platforms. I've gone over this on the last one. Everybody goes, well, Joe Biden did the... Stop, because you know I was right. It's okay. Take take that L, hold that for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, If you cared, you would say, these are the tenants of this plan that this person who is running for office has for you. This is what these particular senators have. Here's their platform. You would create YouTube channels that broke it down with infographics if you really wanted to get that message out. Yeah. We don't do that. You know what we do do, though? We, we get D.L. Hughley to talk about how bad Orange Man is. Yeah. You know, we get Amanda Seals to say, oh, you got to vote this way and da 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 Or we get a fucking concert in Atlanta with 2 chains talking about 
these two candidates right here, they different. They different. I've always prided myself on being different. different. And with that being said, I, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting home <laughs> watching this shit. I'm like, they better fucking not. And I hear that fucking piano start <laughs> digging. <laughs> do, 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 do. I said, no, the fuck they not. Here's and the he thing. performed I'm different at a fucking rally in mm-hmm. Atlanta. Right. And and the thing of it is, when presented with facts, people go through emotions because this is our country. Yes. We can say whatever we want. The problem with black people in America, even Umar Johnson has said this, and I'm sure we'll get to him later, but they don't have any place to deport us. Right. And so you know what they do? They hype us up on reality television and he cares about us because he eats fried chicken or he he brings some some cookout to him. Yeah, uh, symbolism and idolatry. Right. And then, you know, trying to buy a certain percentage of the sector's votes by, you know, taking care of their student loans when the truth of the matter is we should have had the same deal the Native Americans had in the first place. Yeah. Since education is so important, education is going to do this. And then you stand on the stage at Morehouse and start talking about how black people, you know, can't get ahead and they got to do 10 times the job. Well, for 50 years, Joe Biden, what did you do to help black people? I mean, you incarcerated our fathers and our uncles and our brothers. You, oh, wrote, the, okay. you wrote the legislation that, right. you know, broke, put the, put the final, it was literally like when Bane broke Batman's back. The, the crime bill of 94 is Bane breaking Batman. I was movie. born in the dark. <laughs> you merely adapted it. Yes. And, and, and we got our collective backs broke and we were over sentenced and all of that shit. And just now, mm-hmm. 20 years later, was it? No, 30 years later. I'm sorry. 30 years later, we're starting to see the repeal of the le- that legislation mm-hmm. with reform right. and People are coming home from jail that were wrongly convicted like right. hotcakes. Like yes. it's it's for nonviolent drug offenses or for, for fitting in the description or whatever yeah, the case is. Literally maybe. having shit planted on them, and sure. then you find that the officers, the arresting officers were too toxic to be able to give reliable testimony mm-hmm. and stuff. Like just mm-hmm. cases that were rife with prosecutorial sure. misconduct, Absolutely. just pushing black males into the right. in prison industrial complex. All because of the 13th Amendment. So Let's deal with that. And then somebody said something to me the other day. It was like, well, you know, you can't sit up there because Joe Biden didn't write the crime bill. Jack, Jack Brooks did. Okay, I'll say it now. Here's the problem with not paying attention in third grade civics. Um, <laughs> Joseph R. Biden of Delaware was a senator. Jack Brooks was a congressman. Yeah. Okay. One sponsored. The other one had all these people at the table. And then what he wrote went into law and even and somebody said oh well you know in 2004 a lot of that stuff was you know it expired but the uh, lasting effects yeah are still there that's that's a whole decade it's like why do we why do we get in these conversations and speak in extremes and act as if that's not an extreme no because that like 10 years of of loss of life of millions of people is an extreme Mm -hmm. so how can we how can we be having a, a honest conversation and not recognize that taking 10 years of anyone's life uh-huh. is 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 a huge misjustice and there's xenophobia wrapped in that and all of that shit because mm-hmm. it disproportionately affected black and hispanic communities right because again um there's an old saying and it says when faced with the legend or the truth you print the legend yeah right and so the legend is Joe Biden cares about us because he was the vice president under Obama, but people don't realize he is a blue dog Democrat who was there to balance that ticket. Yeah. Right. And Obama, you know, the guy who dropped a whole bunch of predator drones and <laughs> bombing everybody like he literally lived up to his high school basketball name with Barry Obama and did absolutely nothing but said Trayvon Martin could have been my son, did nothing when it came to Sandra Bland, did nothing when it came to Eric, Eric Garner. Like when we talk about what happened for black people, nothing happened. And the whole thing they keep doing is the rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah. And the problem is and I got a lot of issues with Donald Trump because that was the other thing. He's a Trump supporter. No, I'm a Dave supporter. And I vote my interest. I am a fiscal conservative, but I am a social leaning liberal. Yeah. Meaning I care about my people, but in order to care about my people, I got to get money. And I can't get money if the government is telling me that I need to be taxed to the wazoo. So that keeps me from hiring people and Sh- providing jobs. For shift people. it momentarily. Sure. What do you think about the antitrust angle that the Biden administration is playing right now, where they're calling it a public service, where we're going to file a, a law antitrust lawsuit against Apple. We're going to file 
an antitrust lawsuit against Ticketmaster and Live Nation. And I'm like, all right, well, Ticketmaster and Live Nation merged in 2010. If my memory serves me correctly, a little late on them. your man in them was in charge at the time, and they approved this shit. Yeah, because it looks like they're doing something. See, here's the thing, and I, I tell this to my business coaching clients, right? There's a man, two men, actually. One gets up, he stretches, he trains, he does his push-ups. He gets out around 5 o'clock in the morning, and he leaves. He locks his door, and he starts to run, and he runs for 26.2 minutes, right? So 12.1, I'm sorry, uh, four, uh, what is that, 13.1 in one direction and 13.1 we'll one one back direction. home, yeah. right? There's another man, he gets up, he stretches, leaves his house, locks his door, goes to the gym, gets on a treadmill. Runs 26.2 miles, turns the machine off. One has actually gone somewhere and back. Right. The other one has gone nowhere, but it looks like he's doing the same amount of work because he ran in place. And the thing of it is, a lot of times they understand that people are not going to look that deep because it's still 26 miles. Like, why are you bitching that yeah, he yeah, did yeah. it on a treadmill? Like, let's give him credit. <laughs> that's it. All I got to do is give you Negro symbolism and you'll eat it up. Yeah. And that's it. Like, cause we don't ever demand anything and we don't withhold anything. And I'm sorry, in this country, it is the truth. And if you think I'm lying, look at, J look at what happened with Japanese American internment. Look at people who, um, Koreans, like everybody else has gotten their fair share. Right. Yes. And I went over this with the different caucuses I mean, last the, time. The, you know, just the Jewish community hmm. has gotten reparations mm -hmm. every time they like my back hurt, they've gotten reparations sure. again. Like, yeah, nah, the, the lightning was going a little too crazy. And Germany's like, yo, take another 800 million. Like, mm -hmm. they got their own sovereign state. They That's got more reparations mm -hmm. than than we can calculate right. with any sort of accuracy. Mm -hmm. um, and they got their own sovereign land, which is the most important part of that mm -hmm. because it's like, how can you rebuild? You talk, I talked about this with uh, with, with the, uh, the smart guy yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's like, how, he, he's, how can you rebuild your your ethnic consciousness in a place that was committed to murdering you and disenfranchising you. Mm -hmm. You can't. Yeah. So it's like the problem with, you know, like you brought up with black, with black Americans ain't nowhere to send us because we're natural born citizens and Correct. America's the melting pot of blah, blah, blah. But it's like, all right, if you look through slavery, reconstruction, Jim Crow, civil rights era, mm -hmm. crack epidemic, HIV, Mass incarceration, it's like, well, at what point through that whole trajectory of that 400-year window mm -hmm. have black people been truly free and allowed to create open industry and not have a fear that some white entity will drop a bomb on your shit mm. or burn it down or industrialism will drive a fucking highway through it like they did in Opelika? Mm -hmm. Right. So here's the thing. Um we don't have a perfect system. We will never have a perfect system. And you're 100% right. The truth of the matter is we got to stop listening to fake-ass charlatans who are cosplaying like the love child of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Professor Griff tell us how we need to download information or people standing on checks with multi-million dollar, standing on stage with multi-million dollar big checks wearing, you know, satin pajamas and talking about <laughs> they're going to lead us to the promised land when none of those things are true. Absolutely. The other part of that is... At some point, every last one of these individuals, like, I've yet to live in a major city where there was not a little Italy or a Chinatown. Yeah. We got to not only circle our own wagons, given the parameters of how messed up this country is in that way, but we also have to start throwing out our trash. And we do not throw out our trash. What we do is we embrace it and say, that's just how Pookie is. We put the trash in the freezer. That's some black shit. And the trash is upstairs. <laughs> the trash is upstairs in the room, in, in the back room at a house, you know, and you pray that that particular trash isn't molesting your child. Yeah. You know, like we, we are jacked up in that way because we love ourselves so much that we love ourselves to a fault. And we don't look at things from a logical perspective. We don't treat things like a like like a business should be treated. And then the other part of that is we say the wrong things. I have never, and I want you to hear me out on this, I have never in my life supported a black business. And as a black business owner, I do not want your support. Support is what you give a child. Support is what you give poor people. Every black person ain't poor. And if you have a business and you're not a 501c3 nonprofit, then you don't want support you should have patrons because you are the best option on the market. Right. You should create enough economic viability where people want to support you. See? 
Yeah, I get it. <laughs> don't know why everybody else does, but that's the thing. We're always coming across like we want somebody else to save our problems. I'm not waiting for Joe Biden to save me. I'm not waiting for Donald Trump to save yeah. me. I'm not waiting for Byron Donalds to save me. I'm not waiting for King Yada Johnson on a local level to save me. I am busy finding ways to save myself. Yeah, you go out here, you know, and you know, as an entrepreneur, as a salesperson, as an agent, as mm-hmm. a radio person, as a media person, as all of these different hats that you wear, right. you identify opportunity that makes sense. Yes, and it's either scalable or it's not. It's right. either monetizable or, or it's, it's not. not. Like, and you just deal with what is, and it's like, okay, once we get that base foundation in, mm-hmm. then we deal with the other part of making this monetizable, making it scalable, yeah. making it, uh, you know, is this a five-year business or is this a 10-year business? Right. Is this a legacy business? Like, right. because all businesses have different diagnoses right. and there's not a one-size-fits-all solution no. to any business or no any industry. Thing. No such thing. And the other part of that is so many of us can't get our business to a point where we're exiting. Yes. And sometimes we treat our business like we should treat our children. Yes. Like we should treat our children. But most of us, well-intentioned, don't treat our children with the same love, deference, and attention. Yeah, business are meant to be, you know, bought, 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 sold. Sc- bought, scaled, sold, sometimes bought back. Like, right. like we've seen fucking champion brands been bought and sold 15 times in the right. last, you know, eight years or whatever the hell. Mm-hmm. And it's like just just in the last, you know, call it a three-year window, it's mm-hmm. gotten this huge resurgence where now it's viable enough to collaborate with Supreme and collaborate with sure. this brand and that brand or whatever, whatever. And it's like, you know, taking distressed brands as a whole, Gary Vee talks about it a lot, yeah. taking distressed brands and rebuilding them and repurposing them because they already have brand equity and name mm-hmm. recognition is a whole different discipline in itself right. than starting a brand. Correct. But ego is such a powerful thing, Right. A few years ago, I saw this commercial, and I was blown away by it. Payless had rented out a, a, a nice spot in a high-end district, and they put the same shoes they put in Payless in this place, and they got a bunch of influencers mm-hmm. and said, listen, you know, how m- buy whatever you want, but pay what you think it's worth. And these people were like, and they called the brand Polisi, yeah. right? And um, they were, oh, this should be $700. So I'm going to just, I'm going to pay $700. I'm going to pay $1,500 for this. Oh, these are incredible because the quality is there. Yeah. But the environment sucks. Yeah. Here's where they messed up. Instead of ever letting that commercial see the light of day, you take that market research from all of those influencers. You say the Polisi Corporation has just bought Payless. Right. Right. And all of their locations, they are shuttering locations that do not meet the economic, um, Brand standard of of what they're trying yeah. to create for the brand, yeah. and you know, Payless is 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 a company of a bygone era, but it's best that we take this these properties and and things and and, yeah. and convert it because the quality was there. It was just the environment. Stefan Marbury um, had his shoes, the Starbury shoes, in nineteen ninety nine. They were phenomenal shoes, but guess what? People was like fifteen dollars. Yeah, fuck this. Fuck this. You can only get them at Stephen Barry's. Some nah, I can't get them at Foot Locker. <laughs> where the fuck is a Stephen Barry's? Sometimes it's not the quality of the product; it's the environment and the way that you speak on it and the way yeah. that you treat it. And so many of us have yet to learn that lesson. Yeah, I have a lot of friends that are um, that are advertisers, like literally work for you know uh, Wyden and Kennedy, work for laundry service, stuff mm-hmm. like that, and um, that creative storytelling can be the difference in a billion dollar product or something that just completely flops and gets clearance rack, you know, off the shelves. Right. And like you said, just identifying that Payless had an opportunity to take that market research and just rebrand the company and almost, but instead they use it as like a, a gotcha moment to try to prove people wrong and it pissed people off to where they were like, oh yeah, cool, fuck y'all, go out of business. And that's exactly and what And that's happened. exactly what they did. <laughs> so it's like sometimes you can be so smart that you're stupid right. or you could be trying to prove a point so much that you miss the point. Mm-hmm. And I think Payless missed the point in identifying like, oh, we have good product, the brand positioning is wrong right. because nobody wants to be in an environment where it's like all of this rummaged over shit, whatever like that. It's not a comfortable way to shop. No. Like, like me personally, 
I buy a lot of clothes. I can't shop in department stores. It makes my fucking head hurt. No, I can't it's do sensory it. overload. It's too much shit. Same. So I'll go online and I'll sift through 9,000 pages of shit mm -hmm. to find what I want because right. that's more relaxing than the, the physical feeling of being in a department store and nine different people are asking me, do I need help? Yeah. I need you to leave me the fuck alone so I can find what I think I'm looking for. Because I don't need none of this shit. I just have a problem, and I'm here again putting myself through this fucking uh, mental rigmarole just trying to find a shirt or some pants. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so now I just remove myself from that environment, and I do it when it's comfortable, you know, for me. Exactly. And that's the exact problem black people have politically. You know, we need to be left alone. Yeah. Do what we need to do. Stay out of my way. Yeah. Because I want to do my life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness run. Yeah. Right? And if I need you, cool. But I don't need you coming to my community, Dr. Fauci, and telling me to take this jab. Yeah, and offering me a barbecue platter to do it. Right. And, and French fries and all that <laughs> good stuff. And then the whole, you know. We got extra coleslaw. You know, this, 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 this is a disease of the unvax. So people who have not been vaccinated are causing people who have been vaccinated, which is supposed to be. Like, th that type of logic and, and I'm like, y'all don't see this? I really felt like a lot of times when I watch television, I watch the news, I feel like Jaco B. Mugatu. Like, yo, it's the same pose. Yeah. The Tigra, Blue Steel. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Y'all don't see this? Like, it goes, the, the whole the whole problem with the redacted, I'm not going to say what it is because they dings the platform, but mm -hmm. that, that whole period mm -hmm. is that Everything that they told us in public view mm -hmm. went against everything we learned from eighth grade biology going the fuck forward. That's it. It went against the laws of nature. Right. It went against... Common sense. Common sense of when you have something in right. the form of a disease or a virus or some variant or whatever, mm -hmm. people are going to catch it. Yep. The strongest people with the best immune systems are right. going to get over it. Right. People that have weak immune systems or immune compromise or whatever, they're probably going to die if yeah. not treated properly and immediately. And because y'all botched the rollout of the treatment so bad, mm -hmm. it went from we don't know what the fuck this is to you got to quarantine for three weeks mm -hmm. to there's whole COVID wings in hospitals mm -hmm. to every state needs to be accountable and report this to every state needs to take their own method on how they want to report data or whatever to the point where Texas, Florida, and Georgia just stopped reporting it yes. altogether mm -hmm. because we don't want to be accountable to these numbers and fuck you and whatever funding is associated with this. We'll deal with it. Right. It, it, it was it was it was a it was a fucking catastrophe Absolutely. in every way possible. And for me to be someone that's not in government, mm -hmm. that's an independent media person on the outside looking in, and I from December on am telling everybody around me, like from December 2019 on, I'm telling everybody around me, like, yo, uh, this shit might fuck the earth up. Like right. if we don't get on this and do something, right. whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And everyone that I'm coming in contact with is telling me, oh, no, man, we're going to shut down for two weeks. Everything going to be back to normal. I'm like. that's what they were told. Yeah, I'm and like. as long as it comes on the idiot <laughs> box or across your news feed, you're going to believe yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like, yo, hundreds of thousands of people are dying. Italy is shut down right now. Right. I don't think we're going to be two weeks and it's going to be over. It's not a two-week fix, homie. It's not, it's not a quick fix. This is not a, a house, a room renovation in your house. <laughs> this this is something serious. And like, And that's the thing. We don't question anything because when you question things, they ostracize you or yeah. they attack you personally or they attack your character and they try to make you out to be this thing or that thing and this cancel culture that we're in is to a point now where it's modern day McCarthyism if you have a different point of view than anybody else it's a problem yeah. and like I got so many controversial views about so many different things that you know, like if in fact I could get canceled, I would, but I can't, so I won't. <laughs> yeah. But the idea that people have to operate. They like, he's not high enough on a totem pole. We're going to re reallocate his cancellation resources to yeah, somebody you know, else. And that's the thing. Like, <laughs> a lot of that's by design. There's certain things I want to do, yeah. And there's certain things that um, I'll never do because I automatically know what it is. And not unlike Corey Holcomb, I'm okay with being on my own little. I, I like yeah. to be King Kong. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 
So shifting gears a little bit sure. um, and talking about like some entertainment news related stuff. Uh, you mentioned cancel culture. Sure. Right now, mm-hmm. uh, when I see this shit that's happening with Puff, mm-hmm. much deserved, by the way. Bravo, Puff, for you finally getting your fucking reckoning for all of the bullshit that you did the last 30 years. Congratulations. Well, well. <laughs> um, it feels like the same way when Me Too and Time's Up and all of that hit the television and movie industries, this is what that feels like to me. I'm having a sense of deja vu around this shit mm-hmm. where it's like, yo, Puff is Harvey Weinstein, and once we start ripping these closet doors down mm-hmm. and flipping these floorboards up, sure. we're about to find way more skeletons from way more people Absolutely. that we're not expecting or suspecting yep. that are all either complicit Yep. Which is why they're not speaking up. Yep. Or they are equal predators to what he's being made out to be. And they're right. making him the logo of cancel culture, time's up, mm-hmm. me too, for the hip hop generation. And this is their collective reckoning. Mm-hmm. So my my thing is this. First of all, Puff's been trash, and I'm gonna delve delve deep into that in a second. Yeah. But this is getting to such a point where I'm afraid. And here's why I'm afraid. Because somebody's going to go, well, you know, in 1990, Magic Johnson was out here and he did this and that and that and this and this and that and that and this. The tentacles to this shit is scary. There, there's, there's no limit, but by that same token, right? And again, this is not a situation where I feel like people are trying to tear, tear down a black man. No, 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 no. This is not that. This Any, is not and anybody that. making that argument, it's a, you're, stupid, you're, it's a asshole. stupid, lazy, intellectually dishonest argument because at some point, mm-hmm. in order to do a economic cleanup and fix our ethnic image, we got to take all the trash and, and throw, throw it the it fuck out, out. Throw it away. And Puff is trash, without a doubt. Here's my question to you. Did Puff just become trash because of the Cassie thing, or was he trash when he was abusing Kim Porter? Because I sure enough didn't hear this much of backlash when he was doing that stuff to Kim Porter. Because he still seemed to be dancing around and take that, take that take all Take it over back forever. He was whooping uh, Misa's ass, allegedly. His allegedly, first baby mom. Sure enough. And, you know, like, that's the thing. So at what point did it become prevalent? Did it become prevalent when it was a non-black woman? Because to me... It, it it seems like now all of a sudden everybody who should have been standing up for 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 Kim and for Misa and allegedly you know all these other people yeah were, were, were dead silence but Cassie comes along and then the other part of that is if we're gonna talk about something we have to talk about all of it right yeah we also have to look at where Puffy went to school and I'm not talking about the prestigious Howard University <laughs> I'm just saying that a legend goes yeah right. Legend goes that at one point Andre Harrell fired Puff. Yes. And Puff went home to his apartment and he unplugged the phone and he sat in his apartment for three days, allegedly. And when he plugged his phone back in, um, there, there, there were all these messages from all these people and he decided to do a deal with Clive Davis and he presented the whole Big Mac thing. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? In 1991, did they have digital um, answering machines? I don't. Recall. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Having, I would have been eight. Yeah, so I, I was 13, 14. I don't remember a digital answer machine. I'm not saying they didn't have yeah, it, yeah, but yeah. if you unplug the phone, how, how, how do we get to the answer machine? That part. the The other part of that is um, it makes for a cool story, though. It is a cool story. I mean, just like they say, you know, boys the men snuck backstage and 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 jumped up on Michael Bivens. When the truth of the matter is, Charlie Mack walked them back there. Yeah. But that doesn't sell as well. Yeah. When when faced with the truth of the legend, we print the legend. Print the legend. Right. Yeah. So the legend is, and, and that makes sense because he couldn't be accounted for for three days. Well, what happened in those three days? Could it have been a freak off with Clive Davis? I don't know. Could have been. Don't know. Yeah. Right. And then the other part of that is, at what point do we not hold accountable all of the people that gave him the power? Yes. In order to do those things. All of the and all of the people that turned a blind eye. All the people who turned a blind eye. But again. Underlings are one thing, but corporate overlords are a completely different monster. Yeah. And there's a bunch of corporate overlords who are sitting back watching Puff Fry and knowing it's never going to touch them. Yeah. Right? Um, I, I will tell you this. You know, there's a there's a group of individuals who have a lot um, in common, and it usually wraps around one particular man. Yeah. And that one particular man has done a, done a number on people from Millie Vanilli to Whitney Houston. You can take 
from that what you will. All I'm saying is you can't divorce the fruit of a thing from the root of a thing. And those practices have been going on to our people as far back as Etta James, as far back as um, Big Mama Thornton, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Like the, the industry and what people do is crazy. Now, the other part of that is when I look at this situation and it's disgusting every way, every way yeah. you slice it. There's no, um, there's no way that a emotionally intelligent, um, socially intelligent person mm -hmm. can look at this video, can mm -hmm. look at the legal complaint right. and the way that it was filed Correct. from this triple a law firm mm -hmm. which is another thing that people didn't consider like at all. this law firm don't take frivolous cases at this all. ain't this ain't this ain't they, uh they, they win this ain't uh this ain't cu little cousin steve who right. got his law degree this is the law down offices the of office. do we cheat him and how this is <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> is this is this is big boy shit yeah they ain't they ain't coming and, to lose and that the fact of the matter was they already had an agreement in principle and they put the legal filing out as a final fuck you to let him know no. exactly what we have. That's it. And that's all that was. And that and that's the, the gangster part of it. But even with this tape, let's talk about this tape for yeah. a minute. And I get statute of limitations being what they are. But again, I'm also a person that is a human being. And if you're a human being, I have to ask the question, who the hell would hold on to a tape where a man is throwing a boss and dragging a girl for eight long years? and not do anything with it. That, to me, is deplorable. Yeah. It, it's absolutely disgusting. But you know, we, we live in a, you know, we live in a black male culture. Well, and, well. And, and black mailing people is big fucking business. It truly Black is. 100, who manages the game, who manages Ray J, mm -hmm. made his first five hundred or seven hundred thousand dollars depending on who you talking to in the entertainment industry allegedly. from blackmailing yes, oscar allegedly. de la hoya it ain't allegedly. alleged whack has said <laughs> I, he said i hey, i had to, i had the photos i had to tape it is what it is it is what it is like and i blackmailed that bitch ass nigga and it ain't nothing he can do about it because he signed an nda i didn't well so we listen. live in a blackmail culture sure. where and i talked about this on the show we did last week i'm like yo to be naive mm -hmm. enough to believe, I don't give a fuck what you paid. Right. To be naive enough to believe that a tape from, so it was eight years ago, so 2016, mm -hmm. anything 2008 to now, to now, there's a copy of a copy of a copy of Some a copy place, of a cloud, a cloud of a, drive, uh, right. there's a thumb drive of somebody's ass, ass somewhere. Right because in the event that I get fucked up, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to T CNN or TMZ or whoever and sell this shit and now I'm back up. That's it. Because the blackmail game is a six figure to seven figure game. Mm -hmm. It always has been. Truly. You know, and I'm gonna tell you, like Monique said to Steve Harvey, there's the integrity game, because I got some tapes. You know, and that's why a lot of times when you watch, like whether it's your me on your show or somebody else's show, and they'll ask me about a particular individual, yeah, and I speak so freely about. There's said no backlash. There's no backlash. I've never been sued. <laughs> I've never been said, "Oh, well, you know, he's lying about that." Because if, even if you look, even if you look from clips that I took from my last interview with you, yeah, and I put out certain things about certain people, people who were there were like, "He's not lying. Yes. He did not exaggerate." They're in the comments. He's, they're like, in the comments. Blue checks in the comments. Right, like, like no, thank you for saying truth. this, my brother, because this person. And been da -da 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 for XYZ amount of time. Because the difference is when I made a conscious decision to retire, I was betting on me and the quote, I'll be sure I was going off on my own. You understand <laughs> what I mean? So I have the freedom to say those things, but notice nobody, you don't got to like me, but you never call me a liar. Yeah. And that's the thing. Did you get your Grant Cardone lawsuit yet? No, and it's not coming. Because <laughs> Grant, Grant Cardone said, if you content creators keep putting out misinformation about me, I'm going to sue all of you. I oh, don't Grant care Cardone, if you me... got 100 subscribers on your channel. So I was just wondering if you got hit with your lawsuit I never yet. got hit with a Grant Cardone lawsuit, but what I wanted to do was take a little time. I'm going to take my time. And um, I've, got, I've got some footage that came directly from Grant. Yeah. And I'm going to put it out. Because I need y'all to see who y'all worship. And that's another problem with these um, slack-jawed, big back, tap-dancing, crispity-crunchity, crackhead, white-adjacency-loving coons, kooky, emotional, weak <laughs> Negroes, not C-O-O-N-S, yeah, yeah, yeah. kooky, emotional, weak Negroes, K-E-W-N-S, that y'all love Uncle Grant because he's a white man 
scamming. Yeah, because it, because he said, I, "Yeah, I got the same watch as little baby." I got the, like Look niggas love nonsense. Like I got the same watch as little baby. That's the big boy protect right there. And I right. got the G wagon. Look at my office. Look at all my employees. Look at my niggas in there working, dialing that phone up for me to make more millions. My father loved watches. He never had a Patek. I've got three. <laughs> yeah. Some interviews I wear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This watch came from Target. <laughs> I don't need to show you who I am with things. It's not what's yeah. on me. It's what's, what's in me. And the, the thing with Grant Cardone that bothers me is that he said in front of Patrick Bet David that he wants the permission to say the N-word. He just, ooh, I need that stamp. Yeah. And Patrick Bet David is not black, and we've gone over that. The other part of that is... People are okay with that. And your favorite Negro influencer just wants to be seen and yeah. just wants to be on the tarmac and riding his jet and stand so, on his stage. So the, the biggest misnomer that people don't, the average person that's not a, uh, a, a, a three-dimensional thinker like we are, mm -hmm. doesn't get is that souls are for sale. Absolutely. And people are selling their soul for a little bit of nothing. Little people bit are nothing. selling their soul for a seat on the PJ. People are selling their soul for access to... A, a, a car service or whatever. Mm -hmm. People are selling their soul yeah, to wear a chain and take some pictures. People are selling their soul to hit the <laughs> sloppy thirds of insert rapper here. Like, yeah. motherfuckers are selling a soul for these opportunities that, like, are not about shit. Like, motherfuckers are leaving good jobs to go chase behind fucking content creators and Rappers and shit like that. People are tripping. But Chad, have you ever been swallowed <laughs> up? <laughs> have you ever been swallowed up? I was like, yo. And then to see Jakes, and this is how, like, again, I, I've 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 met T D Jakes. I'm not gonna sit up here and lie and say that yeah, I yeah, haven't. Yeah. He was nice to me, right? But to see this man promote Grant Cardone to his people tells me everything I need to know. Yeah. Right. We got to get ourselves beyond what somebody says and actually look what they do. Right. And that's the thing, because we're so addicted to, to shiny stuff like, bro, if it wasn't for my 300 employees, if it wasn't for the fact that this is the only way to reach my people, aside from writing books and speaking yeah. engagements, you never see me in front of a microphone. Uh, you never see me in front of a camera behind a microphone ever again. Yeah. But unfortunately, I live in a world that exists. I don't live in a world that I, I, I wish exists, you know, and, and it's a damn shame, but I'm not going to sit up here. I'm, I'm going to sue everybody. Cool. So when I drop this tape of you and Stormy Wellington talking about how black people call each other what they call each other, I don't want you to say that you're suing me because you put it out in its public domain because you put it on, on a platform that, according to the terms and conditions of the platform, that... It can be reshared. Right. <laughs> so we're going to have ourselves a share -a Yeah, yeah. And Grant ain't the only one on the list. I got, I got a nice little list, you know? And uh, yeah, it's that time. Yeah. Cir circling back to the puff thing. Sure. Um, And then we can shift to something else. Of course. Is the silence of people like Jay-Z, Usher, Jamie Foxx, people that are known affiliates, people that are in the photos, best buds, matching suits, and mm -hmm. all. Is the silence of people like that concerning to you? It's deafening. The other part of that is, and again, Fox, wonderful guy. Like, I got nothing bad to say about Fox. But this is a guy who said, yo, listen, I, I had the big old camera, and I was like, I was tagging along with Puff, this, that, and the third. What on no tapes, Jamie? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people are real quiet because they know that they've got some things to work on. I think that the, the problem is everything is put on the same level now. Yes. Aziz and Zari, right, got hit with a Me Too he situation. A, he had a bad date with a chick. She was the fuck annoying. He wasn't feeling her. Didn't call her back. And she threw that into the Me Too pot. Fucked his career up for two, three years. And it's like, my thing is this. Mm -hmm. How do you defend yourself from an absolute lie? It's, it's damn near impossible. You can't. You'd rather fight a Fed case. Bro, Mark Twain <laughs> said years ago, before the advent of an internet or anything we're talking about right now, that the truth ain't got the time to tie its shoes before the lie reaches around the world. Yeah. You know, and that's just what it is. Like, a lot of times you're guilty before proving innocent. If you believe whatever somebody says about me, yep, okay, cool. You're right. Yeah, and now what? Enjoy that. <laughs> right? Cool. Yeah. Nah. I said she looked good. And? Like, like they're going to continue to do that, and that's the thing. It's modern-day McCarthyism, but Puff is guilty as sin. But here's the thing. The same thing I'll say about Puff is the same thing I'll say about R. Kelly, and it's this. You cannot 
traffic someone by yourself. It's impossible. You cannot have, there is never in the history of these yet to be United States, with the exception of Robert Kelly, a one man racket. It does not exist. It did not exist with Al Capone. Yeah. It didn't exist with any of the quote unquote mob figures. It didn't well, well, simply stated, the only way you become a one man racket is if all of your uh, indicted or unindicted co conspirators cooperate against you under the veil of anonymity and you're pushed to the brink where you basically have to settle this case, regardless of what evidence you think you may have, right. once the driver, the security guard, the business manager, the manager manager, the road manager, the PR person are all saying you did this shit, yeah. you the fuck going because you're the big fish. You're and that's fish. the way that the feds play. Right. They play big bank, take little bank. All day, every day. But the thing of it is, there's always a much bigger fish. And that's all, I've always found it very uh, interesting that when I look at a situation like what's happened with Jive Records, right? Not that Jive even exists anymore, but yeah, Jive yeah, yeah. was R. Kelly's home, was also the home of the Backstreet Boys, it was also the home of Vincent, also the Britney home Spears. of Britney Spears, uh, Aaron Carter. You see what happened to Aaron Carter. Yeah, Aaron you Carter's out of here. Britney Spears just got out of conservatorship. Mm -hmm. A conservatorship that also has ties, because the woman, uh, Lou, whatever the hell her last name is, um, has ties with that. There's there's some Kardashian involvement. Like there's this whole big yeah. Thing. It's like when you when you take the lens off of Britney uh -huh. and you just zoom that motherfucker out, mm -hmm. and then you see the rest of who's in the picture. It's Ooh. a nasty picture. It's a real nasty family reunion. But that's the thing. Like nobody wants to go that deep because if you go that deep, then you take the focus off. And I'm still trying to understand how 24 hours before that raid happened. Kim Kardashian automatically just started unfollowing Puff. I find that very telling. <laughs> Nobody's talking about that. And then the other thing is, well, you know, there's a bunch of tapes in there because Diddy taped everything. Okay, so if Diddy taped everything, why do you think they came and took those tapes? Do you think they came and took those tapes because they wanted to get more evidence on Puff? Or did they take those tapes because just like with those Epstein um, things, those Epstein manifests, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there might be some people on there that are on tape getting swallowed up, allegedly. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, because that that was some big boxes. How, how deep do you think the conspiracy... Cause here, all right, so before I ask that question. Sure. It was said that when they executed these raids, they made a beeline for the security system in the safe in every instance. Of course. That was protocol. Yes. Secure the security system, uh, get, his, get all of his electronic devices in the house, TVs, tablets... Anything with electricity on this motherfucker, take, take it. Because it. It, be, it might be something in the Samsung memory that we don't know. Take all of that shit mm -hmm. and get to the, and, and crack the fucking safe. Mm -hmm. That alone, tactical, yes. directive. Absolutely. We're here for what we're here for. Right. Fuck this other shit. Right. And I almost feel like there was something particular that they were looking Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Because they came at six in the morning, yes. like the feds do. Yeah, and this was particularly interesting because it's Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. It ain't ATF, so we not we know we're not looking for weapons. We're not looking for weapons. It's not the FBI. Right. So it's like you're not necessarily a terrorist or anything like that. It's not the CIA. Same thing. It's not international. Mm -hmm. It's Homeland Security. It's not the Secret Service is Homeland Security, which tells you what? It tells me that. First thing it tells me is that they know everything mm -hmm. already. Already, if, if you're dealing with Secret Service, they just assume they know everything. Correct. They know where the they know, they know where the bodies are buried. They know all the dirty secrets. They right. know who got the thumb drive up their ass. That they mm -hmm. they know everything, mm -hmm. and the path along from that event. As strange as it was as far as how it played out and him not being there and they had the Diddy watch on the jet, tracking the jet, coming from Northern California, going to the, to uh, where did they go? To somewhere in the Caribbean or mm -hmm. whatever the fuck like that. And then it was like, oh, it was Carisha on the jet. It was her birthday. And she was just picking up people on the jet like a fucking Uber. That was strange. Then he's at the air. Then you see him at the airport in yeah. Miami at the FBO and he's got the little white drug dealer boy with him. Mm -hmm. So then that's substantiated from the little Rod lawsuit. Mm -hmm. He's got drugs on him. He's busted. A month yeah. later, he ain't going to jail. Like, it looks to me like everybody is in the feds. You can always trade up. up. And right now, 
if I don't know if 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 Puff is the middle of the ice cream sandwich or the top of this motherfucker, but he definitely ain't the bottom. He's not the bottom. He's not the bottom. So he might be a bottom. But he's <laughs> he not might be. The he's bottom. not the bottom. Right. So he got people telling either telling up and or telling Damn. down on him. Right. And if he's almost in a worse position if he's the ice cream in mm-hmm. the ice cream sandwich and not the cookie. The, the cookie, yeah. Because now you got people telling in both directions. Mm-hmm. That looks crazy. It does. In terms of how do you defend it when it's coming from both ways? The only thing you can do is hope that you have a situation where either your lawyers or yourself, you know, can speak and advocate for yourself on some Wesley Snipes last scene in New Jack City. It's bigger than Nino Brown type yeah, of situation. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger than a Carter. <laughs> that, that, that's, <laughs> that's the only play that you have because they're going to find their fall guy. But my whole thing is while you're paying attention to Puff, how many people are you not paying attention to? Yeah, how many people to? are skating out the back door? And, and that's the thing. So for me, like, I look at dangers, and, and I've heard people make the argument, like, for the whole Harvey Weinstein thing, which he had, like, two cases dropped, right? And that yeah. got real, it was real quiet. Like, you know, like, you heard about it, but it wasn't it wasn't yeah. delved on. Um, and they say, He's well, still in jail, right? He's still, he's still in jail, because right, cool. I think he's still got some California things yeah, or whatever. yeah. yeah. Because that's one thing. One thing I can give California, as liberal as they are, when they finally do prosecute you, oh, they, you're going. They gonna fuck you around. Oh, like, you're going. Look at Tory Lanez. Look at Harvey Weinstein. Like they don't fuck. Like they, they, it may take them 19 years for they finally be like going to court, motherfucker. Yeah. But when they finally get you, if they convict you, your ass is you're going. going. And I'm gonna tell you, and right you're doing now, a hard bro. time. I love I love freedom. I like the sun. I'm I'm not a crime committer, bro. I can't do it. No, nah, man, guys, I got soft skin, and you know, up until recently, I had tits. Yeah. So it just wasn't. Uh, it, nah, it's just not advantageous. Yeah, like for California me. is California is crazy. California offered Tory Lanez a year. They like, yo, just take a year and just get this shit over with, bro. But I don't want to get deported. Uh, hey, man, I, nothing we can do about nothing that. Do about and, that. And our fault you was born in fucking Brampton or whatever fuck you lived at. He f- went to trial, all this shit, wore the pink suit, wore the cream suit, mm-hmm. brought his kid to court. Ten years, motherfucker. Yeah, and that that's a damn shame. But I also think that there's another crime that Tory Lanez committed that nobody's talking about. Was it? Oh, okay. We're not going. Okay. <laughs> Yo, y'all looking at me like y'all don't know. That's fine. I'll, I'll, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best Jaguar in person. I'm take my shoes off, lay on the couch. <laughs> Tory Lanez is arguably, and I could be wrong because this could have changed, but he's arguably the most successful NFT artist in history. This is facts. And when he did that. Not since Prince have I seen an entire industry go. Oh. Yeah, the industry definitely collapsed on him. Right. And he had a, there's something else that, that people are missing. Mm-hmm. Once upon a time, there was this big, long message that he put on his Instagram story about Interscope, y'all better stop fucking playing with me because I know such, 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 such. Mm-hmm. And if y'all keep playing, I'm going to leak the audio and I'm going to leak this and you leak never that. never warn. I never give a warning. You know what I got. You know, which camera can I look at? Uh, that one. Okay. You know exactly what I got. And you know who I'm talking to. I, I don't need to get on Instagram and warn you. You know. And that's why you stay far away from me, don't you? And even that's too much. And, and that's, that's the thing, right? You're dealing with people, right? Who won the East Coast, West Coast beef? Jimmy Iovine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and the other part of that, when Black... Tupac died, Suge went to jail, uh-huh. and then he signed Puff. <laughs> he said it I did. Here's something that's going to blow your mind. And he'll never he'll never say it, but I'm going to tell you. Do you know who actually invented NFTs? Who actually invented it and never got credit for it? No. A guy named Lavelle Crump. Really? Yeah, you know who Lavelle Crump is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, David 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 Banner. Go look at the first God box, right? Yeah. When he put it out, he put out a, a God box set. And in that set, if you go in there, it had all the like QR codes with all this stuff. You could do this, that, and the third holographic, all that mm-hmm. good stuff. Yeah. The same way Prince invented iTunes. Prince is the first artist who ever had a situation that was direct to consumer on the internet. Yeah. Prince was the first and only artist who combined the sale of his record with the sale of his concert tickets. And that's why when he did the Musicology Tour in 2003, 2004, he wrapped that in there, and Billboard said, never before, never again. Yeah, right? so Prince created bundles also. He created bundles, absolutely. 
And they said, no, nah, we can't count these no more. Now, you got that one? Yeah. You got us? You loophole us? We're not letting that happen no more. Yeah. See, a lot of times, pioneers get scalped and settlers prosper. Yeah. And I think Tory Lanez, while I, I'm a huge Megan Thee Stallion fan for very obvious reasons. My, my thing with Tory is this, and it's, it's very simple. It's very, uh, it's very just like boil it down to the smallest molecule. Mm-hmm. If I'm out with my girl and my other girl, <laughs> and one of my girls gets shot, that's a bad night. It's a bad night. It's a bad night. Yeah, no. It's, it's, regardless of who pulled the trigger, regardless that's of what a you bad were taking. fucking night. That's, that's a night you, 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 you wish you just didn't get I'm out of bed I'm with both of morning. my girlfriends who happen to be friends. Right. One of them gets shot. Yeah. That's a bad night. It's and bad we night. outside of my other girl crib that I was trying to get with, get with. and indirectly me trying to get with her caused all of all this of shit. This. Yeah, it's amazing how the Armenian witches kind of just come in <laughs> and just, you know, uh, cre- create catastrophe. But Nigga saw that olive color them. skin and lost his motherfucking mind. Yes, and he did. But my of- whole thing is, like, if you're going to fall in love with somebody, Tory Lanez, fall in love with her surgeon because she don't look like that. Because <laughs> if you were to get her pregnant, she going to look like the original busted version. I'm Listen, I ain't talking about can we, nobody. Can we talk about the fact that, like, men just on the whole are just dumb as fuck Yo, when it comes to like bro, so... women and dating and sex and shit like that and successful men at that mm-hmm. because Tory at the time when this shit happened you were like an A-list internet personality because of club quarantine yes. and you disturbed all of that economy by one being associated with this shit and then two, two. being accused of it yep. and what I told people through the whole whole thing I told one of my close homies I'm not going to say his name because he's a public figure mm-hmm. and he has a business to run I'm not going to fuck him up but he was like no nah, bro this, bull- this ain't happening and I'm just like I said bro that nigga's going to jail, he's going to jail. I said w- and I said and it's very simple based on the simple fact that it took them so long to charge him. Yep. That means they're they read, did a real investigation. Mm-hmm. That means that they're getting their ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. So when I have my ducks in a row and I come get your fucking ass, <laughs> you're going to jail. Clank clank. <laughs> I have it all figured out now. Right. The neighbor that you think is on your side, nah, is not on your side at all. I don't care what he told y'all. Right. The neighbor is already flipped. Yeah. He's already on the prosecution side. Right, absolutely. Because we're going to get you. All I saw was the little guy holding the gun. And I saw the muzzle flashes. No more questions, Mr. Whatever the fuck your name is. Night, night. Night, night. So it's like once that happens and then oh, the driver just shows up in the middle of the night after being missing for a whole month trial. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, yo, what the fuck is going on here? Bruh. Like, it looked... It looked and felt very sloppy. Yes. His initial his initial lawyer, who's a, a five-star attorney out there in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. uh, a woman, I think she's actually representing Puff right now. Right. She said, if you don't take this plea, I'm off this case. Right. Because your ass going to jail. Right. And gotcha. Tory didn't want to hear that. Mm-mm. He so she resigned. She put a letter on the internet. Like, yeah, no, I'm out. I'm I don't have nothing to do with this. Whatever happens from here, this is him and his real estate lawyer. Right. Here's the thing. And and you know my stance on this. Dan knows my stance on this. People who've known me longer than 10 minutes know my stance on this. If you do not appreciate my presence, meaning that if you don't appreciate my expertise, my talents, my gifts, in order to help you out of the situation that you've put your stupid self in. Appreciate my absence. You want to appreciate my absence. And I am not mad at that. I have told people that. I have warned people. Listen, it, it's always funny to me how I'll tell somebody something and they don't want to listen. Right? Yeah. And then they'll listen to somebody else because it's, it, it's you know, they think that this person knows more. This person's done this or this, that, and the third. And then when that person leads you down, like, hey, man, you know what? I really should listen to you on that thing. <laughs> hey, listen, we all have choices. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think he should have taken that uh, taken that plea because that's all they want. They just want to win. Let's just wrap this up and move the fuck on to something let's, else. Let's go because you would have been out. Like, do you do you remember the year T.I. went to jail? Which, which one? <laughs> no, when, when, when Paper Trail dropped. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was like he wasn't gone. Yeah. Because the music was out. Yeah. When Wayne went to jail on that gun charge, yeah. it wasn't like he was gone. And then Drake the popped. Out. It was like, baby, you my everything. You all I ever want. Like, 
they're not going to miss you. A year is nothing. Yeah. You could have done that, ate it, and still made a phenomenal comeback. Did your did your rehab? Did your uh, did your apology tour? Did your anti domestic violence thing? You know, bop yeah. bop bobbity bop, and been done with. I think it. he was so worried about the deportation aspect of it that mm-hmm. he it, it just made him make a dumb decision. And I think that he overestimated the fact of where this trial is taking place. That part. The celebrity element right. of it. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it's Christmas time and people want to go to fuck home. That's it. So. And if if we are eight four, guilty not guilty, y'all other four gotta come to fuck home. You gotta get with the program. You gotta partner. get with the program because it's Christmas and it's time to go to fuck home. That's it. You got to go. We got to go. And it, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it comes down to because it, when people com, people will completely jump over the human element of things yeah. and just think that like, oh, these people on the jury, they got a job to do and all that. Like, they still human. Nobody wants to be Nobody there. wants to be here through the fucking new year Civic trying to figure ass. out if you did this shit Even or not. Even if it's March 23rd, nobody wants to sit on a yeah. jury. Especially with them kind of cases where it's weeks and weeks on it. Nah, dog. He was in jail by December 29th. They they, they, they they didn't fuck around. They, yeah, you got three days to get your shit in order, buddy. But I knew, he, like, he's problematic because, again, you can't divorce the fruit of a thing from the root of a thing, and when you watch his father get up there in front of those press microphones, you can see where that little man energy came. Yeah, yeah, from. yeah. Yeah, no. Nah, like, and, and sometimes you gotta know when to press the shut the hell up button. And so, let me ask you this. Yeah. Why are some conspiracy theories ain't conspiracy theories? No. Because if you read if you read the te- if you read the tea leaves and you just follow the path, you get where the fuck you're going. Right. Other conspiracy theories are conspiracy theories. Sure. Why are black people so prone to want to believe in and want to engage in conspiracy theories on the whole to the point where Tory Lane's father will get up on front of 30 media cameras and say, and Rock Nation, you will cry. Like, that's crazy. Bro, you you, you look nuttier than Hooker spit on All-Star Weekend. It's <laughs> absolutely insane to me. But here's why. Because if you can blame a boogeyman, if you can blame a conspiracy theory, yeah. then you don't have to take accountability for the fact that your life is, you know, abjectly effed up. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, I have yet to run into a human being, especially in this country, who isn't self-made. Unfortunately, only the successful of us will admit it. It's your life. Yeah. What are you doing with your life? It's not your parents' job, you entitled little Gen Z <laughs> bastards. It's not your mommy's job. It's not your daddy's job. It is your job. They gave you life. It is on you. I don't care if they put you in foster care like old girl dropped her kids off because she can't right. take it no more. God bless her. She did the right thing because a lot of people would have put them kids in the dumpster. Yep. At least she it's, took them to the fire. Huh? It's your life. It is your life. We have got to get back to personal accountability, one. Yeah. Two, we also have to get back to personal responsibility. Three, we need to start exercising group economics, and we also have to start throwing out our trash. Immediately. Immediately. All of our trash. Not the, not just the trash that, that puts on the Kofi, the Kofis and the Dashikis and you know has cute little phrases and turns into memes and whatnot. <laughs> Speaking of which, did the school open yet? The school is not open yet. Uh, Dan, did, did, do you the have a school, school update? The, the school is not open, but um, Umar is charging $5,000 for Instagram lives. <laughs> that's, so that's the good news. I mean, Hopefully some of that money ends up in the school system. Um, can I ask you something? Have we found a curriculum? We, there is no curriculum. Have we found anyone who has said, I have signed on with Dr. Umar to teach this particular subject. My salary is going to be this. No staff. Has there been a situation where we started taking some type of applications? Has an application been Allegedly. Yeah. There's an application? Allegedly. Has anybody filled it out? Has it come with a... Come with a fee? That I, I'm or sure is, it does. Or, you know, or, or is it just <laughs> donations? <laughs> donations. Yeah. Gifts. Gifts. And again, I, listen, man, I, with Umar, I, I really want it to work. But, bro, it's not looking good because, again, King Randall built a school with a pile of scraps. And he's younger than my oldest child who just turned 25 yesterday. Yeah. So if King Randall can do it without having $2 million over 14 years, and God only knows you're getting 5 k for an Instagram live. 
five k. Yeah, bro. I, see, I seen it. I seen it in writing. I seen it. Apparently, I, I, I listen. I need to be the Godzilla of consciousness then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because ap- apparently that that's the hustle now. Yeah. That's the grip. Let, let me let me go out here. Somebody hook me up. Can I go to I Goldberg and get me some Kente cloth? <laughs> like, who's selling the Kente cloth? Who, I, who's, I got, when I got my when we did our episode with him, I got my dashikis <laughs> on Fifty Second Street. So if you go to Fifty Second Street. Uh, I forget what it's called, but I, I I'll see you looking. But they have they have they have dashikis aplenty no, I, and thobes I, I, as well. Yeah, no, uh, but yeah, so that. yeah, so it's five thousand for IG Live. Five thousand for IG twenty five hundred due to book it, and then the remaining twenty five hundred due before we go live. Okay, and what is the um, what is the return on investment for that five thousand? You you are guaranteed nothing but uh, Ifa Tunde's appearance. That is it. So Jermaine Shoemake, Umar Johnson, King Kong <laughs> consciousness, the Prince of Pan Africanism in, in pot pies, um, Ifa Tunde, yes, uh, waist beads and cowrie shells and dashikis, five thousand. Uh, so so dashiki Dumbledore <laughs> is charging five thousand dollars. I, I seen it in writing uh, to go on Instagram Live in order to hopefully open up his hotel at Hogwarts. Yes. Okay. Just. Yeah, IG Live, not a po- uh, not a podcast, not a not a controlled medium or whatever like no, that, where you can IG stop, Live. start, edit. IG Live. And here's my here, here's my question: If this man is the and he, can I? Maybe I'm in the wrong kind of business. I don't get this. But where is the where is the the ranking? And by that I mean this: I see all these people talking. about, I'm the number one this, and I'm the most requested speaker well, based for, on for, what for, met, based on what metric outside of the four walls of your need, imagination. We don't, we don't need no metrics. What you mean we don't need no, we don't metrics? Need no metrics? Floyd Mayweather said number one is not a fact; it's a feeling. <laughs> I ain't got to actually be number one but, to claim I'm number one. But, but here's, the, wrong with you? here's the difference, though. Here's the difference. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather is right, but here's the other part of that. He's right with receipts, meaning that if you get a hot dog at the MGM Grand, Floyd's getting 60% of that exactly. hot dog. Floyd Mayweather has literally changed sports. The only people who have taken what he has done and ran with it are the Paul brothers. Yes, but but they're running out of the Mayweather playbook. They're both heels. Yeah. They're both going after people that, that that people say are unbeatable. They are making themselves spectacles. They're creating um, Apollo Creed level heat. Yes, in real life, all that stuff is Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather disrupted an industry that has been <clears throat> controlled. Yeah, you know, since it came up. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm trying to understand how you're just the number one most requested speaker, and you're still asking people for donations from a school where you have all of this money because you're so requested. Why can't you take some of this magical yeah. hotel money and put it towards the school? Why isn't the school opening? Why haven't you even done an online launch of the school to get people prepared for what that curriculum looks like? Why haven't you even launched a homeschool division of your? Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, Derek Zoolander school of things where we can hotep and look good and, and hopefully teach kids how to read good too. Why haven't you launched an online homeschool curriculum? Because that's too much work. How is it too and much I want work? You, I want you to come to my school. A lot of people have this thing, right, where they want to grandstand and they want to say, yo, come to my office, come to my store, come to my whatever, even though it may be more economically viable to have a fulfillment center rather than a store. But a fulfillment center ain't sexy no. because it's just boxes and walls and fucking maybe heat in the winter and and hopefully air conditioning in the summer. It's not sexy. It's not attractive. It's not photo friendly. Is the so, <laughs> the maybe, <laughs> maybe. Right. But <laughs> if I say come to my store, oh, it's pretty. It's dialed up. We can take pictures. We can make IG reels. We can do. So it's like it's like the grandstanding of like trying to have the look. And the grand opening and all of that shit, as opposed to actually doing the work, which is the curriculum. Just like they say, you, church is wherever you have it. Uh huh. Where two or three are gathered, there, I'm, there I am in the midst. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Jesus said that. So, he so said it's that. the same sort of thing. Where it's like, yo, if your if your passion is truly teaching these kids and having a curriculum and enlightening people, mm-hmm. you would you would do that anywhere and on any medium allowed. It doesn't take for you to open a school in order to do that. Right now, I need to be fair. As a, a, as a parent of a child who's on the spectrum, I will tell you straight up and down, I don't think there's anybody who understands that space and the psychology and the, and the game that they run on our children the way Umar Johnson does. Yes. I, second to none. And I will beat the brakes off if you, if you tell me there's somebody better because I ain't met him. However, where's the school, bro? Yeah. Like, that's all I want. Because Charlotte is like, oh, the school is coming. The school. Listen, y'all can sit 
in your um, shea butter pumpkin patch, waiting for the great pumpkin to come like a bunch of little hotep linuses. Yeah. But my whole thing is the absence of evidence sometimes is the evidence of absence. Right. right. And like, I, I just, I, I, I don't, as an educator, I got an issue with that. And no, I'm not going to start a school. And no, I'm not comparing it to LeBron's charter school because the entire American school system sucks donkey dick. Yeah. However, bro, in the amount of time you've been taking to do this, you could have had a kid all the way from K through 12. <laughs> if you just opened when you said you were going to open. Well, you know what happened. We was going to buy Paul Quinn College and then something. You always have a rationale, but you sure enough take time to throw a block party. You sure enough take time to, to go jet setting here. I'm I'm over in I'm over in Atlantis with Aquaman. You did you know Aquaman is black? Like, bro. <laughs> Uh, Smart says something really prolific when we were with him yesterday. I don't want to misquote him, but he was basically saying, like, you have certain people that um, are in the consciousness business, mm -hmm. but they're just trying to make a business out of consciousness. Consciousness, absolutely. Like, they're trying to monetize that I'm at a certain level and I'm at this vibration and I have all this information and da 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 But then they charge you for every access point to, right. to get close to them in order to get the information that they mm -hmm. supposedly have. Right. And and my whole thing is this, right? I would rather you admit that you're in over your head and address the fact that there has not been any type of opening. And you just keep pushing it back like Dr. Dre pushed back that... that, uh, <laughs> that detox. Out, <laughs> detox out. <laughs> like, I just want you to just say, okay, listen, we're doing the best we can. This is what's yeah. happening. But there have been plenty of people, and I deal in facts, I do not deal in emotions. There have been plenty of people who said, hey, I tried to help him. You know, I, I went there and and it's like, no. Yeah. But if people are offering you help and then you get online and say, oh, you know, black people got to do this and black people got to do that. And when black people come to you, you reject them. And then you so pro-black that you hire white people to do it because they were the only people you could <laughs> find to do the job. So in one breath, you talk about how you have all this hope for your people. But in the next breath, you went and found somebody white to do it. So which is it? Proudly did too. Proudly and just said, oh, you know. So not only do you uplift verbally but then you tear down the one thing that you say you don't want people to tear down and that's black people but yeah. i digress man. It, it, god bless that brother I, listen it's a good grift if you can do it and sleep at night yeah and apparently he's sleeping real good with his the, mama's the house. grift game in black consciousness is like super heavy and it's like brother polite is in jail literally right now oh no you can't talk about brother polite everybody was hating on brother polite <laughs> he ain't no pdf file he get like nah nah but was, was it a 14 year old girl or something like that like, Listen, you know what I'm saying? But, but you know, where this, is this, he is, again? this is no allegedly. He in jail. That's what I thought. Okay. And before he was in jail, Brother Polite was, it was Rolls Royce talk. And I'm like, yo, what the I'm, fuck is going yeah, on? And the here? starry ceiling in the whole nine. Yeah, you like, you know, oh. this is the new phantom right here. This is the wide body. And yeah. I'm just like, yo, what the fuck is going on here? Yo, I he was offering credit consultations and shit. I'm like, yo, listen, what are we? Yeah, no, you can't be free until you free yourself of that debt. Right. Get that credit off your back and get get you this 800 credit score. I talk, you drop Rolls Royce like Brother Polite. I talk to a bunch of people who I respect in the coaching community. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, is it me? Like, why don't we have these things? Like, <laughs> we're doing good. Like, I'm not sitting up here. Like, like don't throw no penny party for me. <laughs> like, but I, I literally, because here's the truth of the matter. Like, you know, at the end of 2022, I lost my brother, my only brother. Right? Yeah. And, I, you know... The same way Kanye went to a deep depression when his mother passed, I went to a deep depression because I spoke a language that only me and my brother spoke. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cookie only had two sons. So I was like, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm not doing something right. And I I, I called a good friend of mine, April Franks, and I was like, yo, April, um, this is happening and that is happening. She's like, nah, that's everybody. Like, this is just what that is. It's not you. This is the industry. I'm like, but such and such is doing this. And she was like, you know, good and hell well, such and such is a scammer. <laughs> and I'm like, but, 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 but. And she was like, we don't have it in us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I tell people all the time, if there's ever a complaint about me, it's usually that um, I want you to work. Right. It's not, I'm not. Do I look like Will Smith to y'all? No. Do I look like Robin Williams to y'all? No. Aside from this glowing on me, <laughs> am I blue? You are not blue. Did I come here in a lamp? 
You did not. So I'm not a goddamn genie. <laughs> you still have to do the work. Now, if you want to hire me to be a fractional CEO, 30 grand a month, we could do that. Yeah. But you can't say nothing. You got to sit down. Right. But you don't have that. So if I'm asking you to do something and you decide to do your own place, I'm only responsible for what I told you to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I gave be- you the info. And you chose to do whatever you wanted to do you with it. You did some other shit. That had nothing to do with what that I That had nothing to do with my plan. This is there for not my fault. Right. And you got... Some other shit you gotta. I'm you gotta, Zack Snyder. <laughs> you're Josh Whedon. You took my beautiful Justice League and you turned it you into turned some it into bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> turned it into fucking. We yeah, we discovered the Justice League on these email attachments. <laughs> what the hell? Why Lex? And then have the how did they get their logos? Like Lex Corpus on some next level. You know what? You want to you want you want to clean up Hollywood? Call Lex Luthor right now. He know their logos. He's got their branding. He knows everything they've done. They hold. They got blood samples. They hold history. I mean, you, you, you discovered Atlantis, and as <laughs> egotistical as you are, you didn't tell everybody you discovered Atlantis, Bruh. Shit is wild, but man. Come on, man. Uh, shifting gears a little bit. Sure. Uh, did you see Cameron on CNN this I did, week? And I loved every minute of it. God, really? God bless him. Absolutely, because here's what here's okay. I fucking hated it. Uh, okay, tell me why you hated it. I hated it because at what point does hip hop mature? Mm-hmm. At what point does hip hop show that we can read the room mm-hmm. and that we are fully formed human beings mm-hmm. and operating on a frequency other than real nigga? Mm-hmm. Like, at what point do we place our ethnic image at the forefront? And either politely decline an opportunity that we don't want mm-hmm. or show grace and dignity to the platform and use it as an opportunity to monetize and look like the smart, astute business person that you are mm-hmm. rather than show up looking looking like a member of EPMD and acting how you acted. I just, I just, I just thought it was, it was unbecoming of a 48 year old man. Nothing you said is wrong. Now allow me to give you a different perspective. Yes, I'm here for it. Right. First of all, Cameron got about $15 million in marketing and advertising for free for that clip. The other part of that is you've been black as long as I'm a little less than I've been. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little, little, little bit older. Yeah, I've been yeah, black yeah. a little bit longer <laughs> yeah, than little you. Longer. Just a little bit. Not by much. I got a little bit of a, I've got a bevy of a experience that you just again. don't have yet. But <laughs> that, that, that aside, you know good and hell well when I come in and I say certain things, people don't hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But you know what? You know what? You did hear it all? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm, a, I'm about to get some cheeks after this. What, what, what people missed was a lot of times the media will use an Ouroboros, meaning the snake that eats its own tail, in yeah. order to tear us up. So they got the black reporter to sit down with Cameron in order to try and sell Puff out on a platform to get more dirt instead of just handling it. They wanted to let the Negroes fight. And what Cameron did was put an eye on it so that everybody would run with their little YouTube think pieces and this, that, and the third. Because if Cameron Giles showed up and said, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is absolutely a travesty. What you're doing here is conspiratorial. I do not like it. It is combative. It is not uh, dignified or respectful. I don't have those run-ins with Puff, but I do know that Mason Betha has had run-ins with him. He's a co-host on, on my show. It is what it is. What would have happened was absolutely nothing because you Negroes don't respect intelligence. You respect Ratchet. As much as we say we don't, I give you Andy Cohen, who has been disrespecting black women for so long that when I got on a platform hosted by a black woman and talked about how reality television is tearing down the image of black women in the in the world, black people up to and including D.L. Hughley and Jamel Hill told me I was wrong. I was out of pocket, this, that and the third. So if he did what you're suggesting, yeah. It would not have made the impact that it made. Sometimes you have to send in a bulldog to expose the skirt of the game that they run. I'll give you another example. Do you remember Good Morning America right after the Rihanna situation that Chris Brown was there to promote certain things? Mm-hmm. And they went and got, uh, is Robin Roberts? I believe Robin, Robin, Roberts. Robin Roberts to uh, agree that she wasn't going to ask certain questions. And the first thing she did was ask those very same questions. It's an Ouroboros. You have the snake eating its own tail. Yeah. Like, you're setting people up in that way. And so what Cameron did, knowing that they were going to do that, was a brilliant move. Because what you're not going to u- do is use that man. Do I like that he did it? No, but I love that he did it. Yeah, my, my thing is this. At mm-hmm. what point do we just say, you know what? I know y'all on some bullshit by including me in this expose that y'all are running on this nigga, mm-hmm. I'm just not going to participate. That's where I'm looking at it mm-hmm. in terms of like, 
you have your show, you have your network, right. you got multi million dollar partnerships, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like you've been on this image rebrand mm-hmm. by doing sports media, wearing the suits every day. Like their conversation is not typically around mm-hmm. entertainment news. Right. It's very directive to what they're doing, which is why they were able to soar the way that they did because yeah. it's two guys who come from rap, but also former elite level basketball, basketball players. players talking about sports. Absolutely. Oh, this is fucking brilliant. Absolutely. So with that in mind, it's just like, my thing was, why not just stay home? Why not just stage a peaceful protest and then go on your show and say, yeah, they offered me to come on because CNN. Because there will be another Negro who will fill that role. And I'm glad you brung that point up. And, and here's the bigger problem that I have with the whole hip hop ecosphere in mm-hmm. general. Sure. No matter who you put in that seat, mm-hmm. you're either going to get bull in a china shop or mm-hmm. you're going to get somebody that's going to get up there and placate yes. to Puff because their res- their experience with him is not, not what they saw all. on that video. Correct. So you could put Killer Mike up there, sure. who's smart, who's brilliant, who has his own industry, who's having a career resurgence, all of the all of the all of the above. And he gonna get up there and he gonna say, Oh man, that ain't the puff I know. What I seen was discussing on that video. But let me tell you this, when I was signed a bad boy and when I was fucking modeling for Sean John and the, they gonna play the same game. T.I., yeah, when I was getting started in my these are smart brothers. Sure. When I was getting started in my career, uh, you know, Puff was one of the people that helped guide me through the industry. Like, they're gonna sit up here and give this whole laundry list of reasons. Why that's not the puff that they know, even though we all seeing this shit in mm-hmm. 8K video. Right. The thing of it is, like, number one, and I'm glad you said that. I think Killer Mike is a brilliant dude. I do. I don't have a whole lot against Killer Mike except for um, that Greenwood Bank has a lot of issues with it. Um, and then the other part of that is, did you ever see uh, his show Trigger Warning on Netflix? Absolutely. Um, where is Blood Pop and Cola right now? Dead. I, 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 I search for it every month. Yeah, of course you do. Here's the thing. When you have the knowledge that that man has, and you say, well, you know, the Hells Angels have done all this merchandising and marketing and this, that, and the third, and you take the time to go have the conversations and the uh, parlays with the OGs as far as getting permission to use their IP, yeah. right? Um, why in the world would, one, you sell a product that's going to damage our community? Right. Number two, you know, good and hell well with all of the merchandising, all of the marketing, all of the businesses you run, that this is not a good long term play. Number three, the fact that they didn't do it in commercial kitchens is really telling. Number four, that entire situation was more about allyship. And you grew up in Atlanta your entire life and you're trying to tell me you don't know where the black owned hotels are. You don't know where the black owned stuff is, bro. I got to call a little bit of B.S., because that was a very entertaining show. Yeah, but, super entertaining. But, but Michael Render knows a whole lot better. And I'm I'm sick and tired of these talented 10th-ass Negroes getting up here and talking about all these things while knowing good and hell well the truth of the situation. And, and that's my whole thing, regardless of whether it's Killer Mike or Cameron or this, that, and the third. Why is it we never go and with pitchforks and torches, and I'm not advocating violence, but we never drag Leor Cohen from his ivory tower? We never drag Clive Davis from his. We never drag Jimmy Ivy in from his. We never go and, 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 and grab Andy Cohen by the collar. We always focus on the rappers and the ratchets. At what point do we start focusing on the root of a thing and uproot the tree as opposed to the fruit of the thing, which is easily replaced and regenerated? Yeah. That is my issue with us right now. Y'all never look at the people who are pulling the strings. Y'all always focus on the cowardly lion, the little girl, the stupid dog, the tin man, and the scarecrow, but you never talk about the wizard. And shame on you for not talking about the wizard, and shame on you for shaming people like us who do talk about the wizard. Let me ask you this. With 50 years of hip-hop, hmm And it going from a a black medium controlled by black forces, black Mm -hmm. creatives, black DJs, black rappers, black Mm -hmm. graffiti artists, black, 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 black. Some black, y'all. So where now almost all the concentration of ownership is in the form of corporate entities, people from outside the culture, Uh even on the independent sphere, Mm -hmm. guys like Ghazi and the guys that run... uh, the guys that run, uh, what's the other big independent create music group and stuff mm-hmm. like that? They these are not black gentlemen at all. These are not these are these are not black faces. And then at the heads of these companies, there's very few, if any, black faces. Mm-hmm. Ethiopia, who was uh, the CEO of uh, 
uh, Motown mm -hmm. quietly just resigned, just out the blue. We ain't seen her. She barely been on Instagram Born. since. That's odd. Mm. Th th under the nature of which she resigned at the height of this whole thing where QC just sold the hype for $420 million and then she's just out of just here. gone, just out of mm -hmm. here. That was strange. Mm -hmm. um, not returning to the music industry after all the success she had at Mo Universal Motown. Also strange. strange. Also strange. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, it's like with 50 years of hip hop, knowing what we know, mm -hmm. knowing that they, the goal is to make us look as foolish, as dysfunctional, as fucked up as possible, highlight all of the worst um, archetypes from our community through this music, market it to our children, mentally fucking poison them, uh, have them take part in dangerous habits, drinking, smoking, gun violence, all of this shit. At what point do we take accountability and stop falling for the nigga trap and make the decision to do something different, to do something better, to be better, and to resist the low-hanging fruit of here's $30,000 in a chain, go out here and be the best nigga you can be and rap for these white folks. Because that's who's buying the music in large. Mm -hmm. So, um, here's my question. Do I have to shoot you to kill you? Or Absolutely not. Okay, I'll let then. you die a slow death. So that's the thing, right? Um, we don't ever examine anything. We never look anything beneath the surface. We only focus on what we see, right? 50 years of hip hop is great, but 23 of those years are the only ones I can count simply because the remaining years, Let's keep it a buck. The remaining 27 years have been corporately controlled. Yes. Because the last time that it happened where it wasn't corporately controlled, we had balance. You know, for every Luke, we had a Jazzy Jeff and a Fresh Prince. Yeah. Right? For every and NWA, you had a De La Soul. Exactly. There was balance there. Yeah. You know, I got cousins in the jungle, brothers on a quest. <laughs> we don't have that, and that's by design. Because the last time we had that, I mean, Fight the Power was on the air the same time that the uh, Rodney King verdict was happening. And guess what? People was out in them streets. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is everybody right down to God himself understands the importance of a message in music. Right? Yeah. Um, Lucifer, before he morphed into Satan, was in charge of music. We got to get ourselves to a point where we have to realize that you're being fed this and we're told that this is OK. And at any time we say this sucks, what we're doing is somehow gaslighting, being misogynist. We are um, hating on people. Let Sexy Red be what Sexy Red is. Nobody's stopping her. But why is she the only thing that is? And then not only that, they keep bringing in people, right? who sort of kind of identify as black yeah, to replace the people who are unmistakably black. There is a reason that Nicki Minaj is getting stopped at airports and missing shows. Yeah. Right. There is a reason that you got a person who is not of black descent going around cosplaying like a 1970s soul singer and acting <laughs> as if he's the Hawaiian black. punch man. <laughs> right. Not only that. And people are like, oh, no, he's black. No, he's not. If you look at his sisters who had a group called the Lalas or the Lilas or whatever the hell it was called. Yeah. Come on, man. He ain't black. The fact that one, his name is Bruno Mars is because he looked like Bruno San, Bruno San Martino. Like <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a fact. I'm not even being funny yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. Like, but we, we love that. And like, even if you go way back into like the 80s. And I'm not trying to go off on a run here, but back in the in, in the late '80s, when Bobby Brown should have swept awards, they were given to George Michael. Yeah. And the only person who said anything was Gladys Knight, because Gladys Knight couldn't be touched, because she was Gladys effing Knight. Yeah. Like, we don't want the responsibility of being responsible. We want the enjoyment of being the people who say that's just what the culture is. How is it the culture when it's run by Jimmy Iovine, when it's run by Lior Cohen, when it's run by Clive Davis and all of the mainstream Barry people, Weiss and all, all of these cats, yeah. you know, who are profiting handsomely? And at what point do you stop telling kids that they got to have a wicked jump shot or rap? 
yeah. in order to get out the hood. Why don't you tell them to be accountants? Because accounts are extremely important, especially CPAs. Why don't you tell them to go into business management so that they can manage these rappers and get deals? Like, And then <laughs> even when you have a situation like old boy whose mom was his agent, I can't call his name, but they was clowning him because his mom was an agent, in I think, in the NFL. Um, they was like, oh, oh Lamar Jackson. Yeah, clowning him. His mom got him a phenomenal deal. Got him the great. He got the richest contract in NFL history at the time. Right. And that's the other thing. We're so afraid of each other that we don't even trust our family. Yeah. And if you think I'm lying, y'all can say whatever y'all want to say about Joe Jackson, but he beat them kids to the point where the greatest selling <laughs> beat album, you to success. <laughs> greatest selling album of all time, came from his nuts. The, the end of the conversation. Like, we have to start looking deeper at things and saying, you know what? No. And then. Here's where I want to land my plane. What the hell do you need the record companies for? At this point, nothing. I've explained to people several times. I said, listen, if you are in 2020, uh, creating music in 2024, mm -hmm. all you need is an account with one of the following. I'll say this into the camera. TuneCore, yep. DistroKid, United Masters. One of those three. Or maybe even a Connect Music or whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you have an account with one of them. You can literally pay for as much services as you need in order to highlight your music, in order to put your music. Um, they have playlisting services, all kinds of shit that you can do on an independent level for right. nominal fees all the way up the line. Right. For where it's like you can either pay for it a la carte or you can basically have it in your bundle where based on how much you pay, whatever tier you on, you get X, Y, Z amount of services that mm -hmm. come, including up to Spotify Spotlight, which is a new artist discovery service that they have that distributes you, puts you on a certain amount of playlists, stuff like that, prime right. placement, right. and all of this stuff right. for hundreds of dollars a month. Yeah, but what the what? fuck do you need a music company Here's for? Here's why, because most of these, this camera? This camera? Yeah. Most of you Negroes don't want to bet on yourself because you're scared shitless and you do not play to win. You play not to lose. And that's why you will never make it out of your Cousin Winky studio basement. That is exactly why you will never be free. And that's exactly why you'll be one of these people still sitting around at 46 years old trying to rap. Like, I'll never forget this. One of the greatest lines I ever heard was Eminem talking about Benzino. He said, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But I'm just being real when I say nobody wants to hear the grandfather rap. <laughs> Y'all only want somebody else to do the hard part for you. So I'm going to say the quiet part out loud. When it comes to this, all you want to be is on. You don't want to be impactful. You don't know what it is to be an artist. Yeah. You don't study artistry. You do not play any type of instruments. Hell, most of y'all don't know how to DJ. If that Serato and that laptop ain't set up, you're fucked. And that's the bottom line. You don't want the responsibility. You only want the shine and the pussy. Yeah. So you, get, you, so you they don't get, want to bet so on you themselves. get what you get. You get the scraps left off the plate. Mm -hmm. You got to sit and you got to wait for somebody to cut your fucking check. Oh. You got to, uh, you know, you got to make sure you don't offend nobody or or be too, too. emphatic about your points. Right. Because now your check that's supposed to come tomorrow turns into a net 60 or a net 90 mm -hmm. or a net 150. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or somebody forgets to sign off on this or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. We talked about this with, uh, with, with Core who's an emerging artist from the city right now that's cooking. Right. And it's just like, yo, it, the the whole game itself is built off a lot of dysfunction and misinformation. Of course. So being equipped with the information we have now in 2024, where uh -huh. we know is dysfunction and misinformation first mm -hmm. and it's predatory third, mm -hmm. at what point do we say wholesale, like as a monolith, we are moving away from this shit until we get our proper equity and we get the same treatment that Mariah Carey gets or fucking Billie Eilish or mm -hmm. these other artists that get to call their own fucking shot in terms of what they want. Mariah Carey was signing fucking baseball contracts in the music industry, getting $35 million signing bonuses that were not recoupable against her album sales. Right. Yeah, that don't happen. And then you got these young black teenagers in early 20s mm -hmm. that are literally killing each other yes. for twenty thousand dollars in a necklace correct so and that twenty thousand dollars is at a, a 68 percent interest rate that they yes. got to pay back of course. and if you jump on a yeah and if you and if you jump on a fucking private jet yeah yeah but that's yeah oh it's 20 yeah that's gonna be thirty five thousand. yeah that, that, that's coming off of yours that's right. coming off of yours yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah and you gotta refuel Fully. and and, and mm -hmm. Whatever snacks you got to pay for that shit, too, and craft services and all of that. So the game is designed to be so predatory that it keeps you perpetually in debt where you're always owing money and you're living release to release. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, you don't own shit for 30 years, nigga. Right, but here's the gag, right? 
let's say we were to a- able to get 99% of all black people together as artists and performers and content creators and all that and say, we're not going to take it like a D Snyder record, right? Yeah. It's always going to be that one Negro. Yeah, exactly. And that Negro is this, this has historically been proven. Yes. That Negro is descended from the slave that Harriet Tubman should have shot. Yeah. That, that's it. Because again, we don't take care of our trash. We do not shame people. Like when, when I was DJing and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a founding member of the core DJ shout out to my man, T Neil. Um, if somebody was in a market and they were messing it up by, you know, undercharging, you gotta go. Hey, 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 it's hey, a bro. conversation it's and a then conversation. it's corrective action all day, every day. And we regulate our industry that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. We're not doing that. Yeah. No. We have a standard. Yeah. No. And if you're not up to snuff, you got to get the fuck out. Bro, that's not happening. You got to no shape up or ship out. That's not happening because now shame is hating. Yeah. There was a phrase that we all in this room know. We all grew up with black mothers and black grandmothers. Shame the devil. Shame the devil. Shame the devil. So it's that meaning if you on some bullshit, it's my responsibility as somebody that likes, loves, or cares about you to duty. let you motherfucking know no. you on some bullshit. That's it. Guess what? And if you still on some bullshit, when I get back, you got to get the fuck out. Right. And if you don't want to get the fuck out, well, then that's your ass. Yeah. And then we, we close the door. We, we handle it. Exactly. Like we handle it. You get that five minutes, as they said. That, that, does, <laughs> that doesn't happen anymore. And that's the problem. A whole bunch of people are out here, soft as drugstore cotton, would rather be the ones picking it. Yeah. And that's it. You'll, you'll never get there because there's always going to be some person that, that, you know, advocates for this mess. And because somebody's going to advocate for it, People gonna be like, oh, you know, I just hate and just don't, know. and I just <laughs> like just, just just say you're a coon, and, and let's just move on with it. Like that's just what it's gonna and, be. And I think the bigger problem that it creates is that the people that really are willing to like push the line and lay down the law and potentially die in order to get some change and some real ownership for black folks, they won't even martyrize themselves because they know it's going to be in vain. Because mm-hmm. they know that some little goofy nigga from Indiana or whatever the fuck he's from going to come and take the first slave deal that they offer, Absolutely. even though I didn't lay down my life. So it's a thankless job. Right. And there's Fighting so much, a good fight is such a thankless job now. There's so much more money in selling out your people or telling your people to think a certain way, be a certain way. Um, what's the last hit record Plies has had? Shit, it's been about a, a decade at this was point. Was it Bust It Baby? Yeah, somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. Uh, he what he had the uh, vibing at the Ritz Carlton. That was like four years ago. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, okay, that was a good um, record. He making he must be making a whole lot of money getting on uh getting on lives acting like he actually talks <laughs> like this. Plies is one of the most eloquent brothers I have ever met yeah. in my entire life. But why are you playing that character? To get people to vote a particular way. Yeah, when okay. you understand the story of Plaza, it's almost like performance art when you see the the, 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 the character that he's playing because he's so intelligent, he's so accomplished in business outside of music. Outside of that music. That is just like, so the the gold teeth and the goon thing, that's just like, that's just like some Fort Myers, like cosplay shit. It literally is. But again, my whole thing is, y'all don't hold Jack Harlow accountable too and i told my daughter this my daughter's 25 years old as of yesterday right i said by the time you're my age black people rapping will be as weird as lenny kravitz and slash is to (laughs) us in rock and roll right yeah because y'all don't believe it y'all let everybody in the same way y'all let everybody into the hair industry and y'all can't even buy y'all can't get a daggone rat tail comb without an asian getting a piece of that yeah, y'all continue to let everybody why, why, in. Why are we like that? Why, because why are black is people for so everybody? Yeah, why are, wants to love everybody? Yeah, why are black people so in, so inclusive like that? Because we're told to. Because Massa says you gotta be. Your 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 president said, <laughs> and this is my personal favorite. Y'all will have to get with the Hispanics. Y'all have to get with these other people because they're gonna start outnumbering you. He said it. <laughs> he also said he was going to. Um, he, 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 he built 170 miles of wall. Like, at some point, you got to re- remember that the inclusive thing is something that's been put on us. And then what they do after they martyrize you like they martyrize Dr. King is they forget all the stuff that you talk about. Well, you know, we're coming to get our checks and, and you know, white people who are farmers get all this stuff, but black people who are farmers don't. Yeah. When we go to D.C., we're coming to get our checks. They said, no, you not. Pow! <laughs> and because we don't understand that that's what's happening. We we believe we're people of color. Yeah. Charlie Sheen's a person of color. 
No, sorry. Yeah, he's an Estevez. Yeah, the, the, the end, right? And that's the other thing. Like this, this girl on um, on on social media said, "Well, black people got to remember the Dominicans aren't black. We're Spanish." No, you're delusional, boo boo cakes. Yeah, we all was on that same boat. You just on got dropped boat. off first. And I get it. Listen, if you don't want to identify as black, that's your business. But y- y- your wide nose breathing on the white man's hair <laughs> and them soup coolers you got, tell me everything I need to know, boo boo cakes. You can pull that I know black shit when it ain't no conflict. Right. Let the race war kick off. You think they're going to be like, oh, no. What's, what language? what's your up. home language? Show me your 23 and me, uh, <laughs> nigga. Like, no, nah, man. Y'all need to cut that yeah, out. It don't but work that way. We, we let a lot of people cosplay as black people unchecked. We let a lot of people cosplay like they have our best interest at heart unchecked. Yeah. We let a lot of people cosplay as the vice president unchecked. And so what winds up happening is we continue to get exactly what we get. A, a, a place that's basically the Wild West called Black America. Yeah. And then when people tell you this, I, I can't wait for the comments. Oh, you hating? You a Trump supporter? You this, that, and the third. Listen, as long as you're not calling me that at the bank, I will find <laughs> a way to cope with your your love of mediocrity. I got two uh, political questions. Sure. And then we can shift to whatever you want. No doubt. Um, Give me your first thoughts when you saw uh, New York City uh, rap legends Chef G and Sleepy Hollow step on that stage with Trump in the Bronx the other day. Please tell me you saw this. I saw Make America Great Again. <laughs> I was like, yo, Trump, bro, that's not who you get. That's not. <laughs> I'm trying, but my thing is this, right? I'm trying to figure out when they <laughs> went through the whole Rolodex. Like, how, how did do you they get past? <laughs> There's so many. Here's my thing. There's so many. If I would have respected you if you went and got Dwayne Carter. I would have. Yeah. Because at least with Lil Wayne, you, there's history. But there's a lot. If you, Lil Wayne gave me my very first wake up call. No, my second wake up call. Trick Daddy gave me my first. But I'm going to focus on Lil okay. Wayne. Lil Wayne dropped that record and said, best rapper alive since the best rapper retired. And, you know, I, as a radio person, I'd bump into Wayne here. I've lived in 19 states, so yeah. it wasn't an uncommon thing for me to interview Lil Wayne. And he, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee at this particular point. It's 2004. And <laughs> he was like, uh-uh, don't say nothing. I know what you gonna say, Taz. I know what you gonna say. Don't say the joke. We save it for the air. And I'm like, all right, y'all. Um, Lil Wayne's in here. Wayne, you know what I'm gonna say? Best rapper out since the best rapper retired, and I said it. And I said, but, 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 uh-uh, Taz, challenge me. I don't see nobody around that's gonna challenge me. And until I get somebody who's on my level to challenge me, I'm saying what I said. And he meant that. Yeah. That is a level of intelligence that defies co- uh, conventional wisdom. And my whole thing is, if you want to get somebody, go get him. There's so many. There's more conservatives in hip hop than there are gay men in hip hop. And there's a lot of gay men in hip hop. Not my job to out anybody. That's right. not my thing. I ain't on that. I think that's a little cornball of a move. But... To put it in perspective, it's a, it's a lot of people. This is an inclusive platform, by the yeah, way. We love everybody. We love everybody. Absolutely, we do. ELE, everybody love everybody. Everybody love everybody. I love the eligibility community. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the eligibility community. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I, I thought about it, and I was like, wow. Because you had record numbers. Nobody believed that she was going to have that many. It was a sea of people, yes. all types of people yes. from all walks of life. The only time I've ever seen anything like that that was not politically related was a Prince concert. It was that diverse. Yeah. And it like people you wouldn't think would get along, have a beer, have anything in common. We're all sitting there. And you know why? Because they sick of the BS. Yeah. It's not about sneakers and, and mug shots. It's about we're sick of you playing in our faces and not giving us nothing. Yeah. So if you're not going to give us nothing, what else do we have to lose? But I saw, I saw them rappers and I was like, the, y'all the new diamond and silk? This is trash. Donald, homeboy. Was Arsenio busy? <laughs> you couldn't call Little John? <laughs> Who, what? You already got a relationship with him? Yeah. Like, you could have called anybody. He said, nah, New York City. Bring up my New York City brethren, Sleepy Hollow and Chef G. And I was like, <laughs> And she, not, mind you, Chef G is like a month out of the feds. Like, literally, like, just got out of the feds. Who got him out? 
He posted bond. He posted a okay. million dollars bond. Oh, okay. Hey, listen. <laughs> I, those types of and and that, that to me is the problem. I think there's a lack of diversity on the, from the the Biden the Biden campaign and the Trump campaign have a lack of intelligent intellectual culturally um, profound diversity in yeah. those positions of power yeah. to guide them say no 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 but then i've also learned from being an agent manager um handler of top tier celebrities that sometimes people just gonna do what they want to do regardless of how much you warn them and ain't nothing you can do about it yeah but i, I was like i wasn't ashamed because i'm not one of these black people that says oh look at y'all acting like this in front of these good white folks I don't give yeah a no i wasn't that. ashamed i just and thought it was hilarious i thought I was it was like, hilarious and this ironic is insane to me <laughs> i was like are y'all seeing this and what killed me was everybody was popping like was, it was like yeah! i was like <laughs> But that's the but that right there, Bruh. that's the other part that I loved about it. New Yorkers love each other so, so much. much. Yo, if the whole country, because it's like in New York City, there is no race. Nah, we're, we're New Yorkers. New Yorkers. They all have the same temperament, the same attitude, the same fucking language, all of that shit. All They're of all them. the same. It don't matter. The, even if you're on the Upper West Side, the most hoity-toity white woman that hey. that's a housewife will curse you the fuck out. <laughs> with the same temperament. With the same temperament of a woman from Brooklyn. They're Facts. they're all the same. Absolutely. So if the whole so when you talk about melting pot, New York is actually that. Right. If we could extrapolate right. whatever that, that whatever that for the rest is, of the country, we could cure racism. Yo, man, it's it, it's it's the pizza or the Hudson. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but it's the listen. It's some, they love each other, it's, yo. It's a thing. And that's why, like, even you remember Spider-Man? The one where, where, where Spider-Man had to hold, like, hold back the train yes, and whatnot. Yes. And he realized he was unmasked. And it was like, don't worry. New York's got you. I'm like, yo, that's the most New York <laughs> shit yes. yo, ever. You ever watch those side talk videos? <laughs> where they're at, like outside the Knicks games and stuff like that, and it's like it's like a uh, uh, fuck Trey Young. Trey Young not even playing. <laughs> fuck Trey Young. <laughs> you balding in the middle, bitch. Like they just love each other. Yo, they're all about New York, and Look. and I love that about them. Yo, the, the the Knicks did not beat the Sixers. New York beat the Sixers. <laughs> yes, you cannot. You a fired up yes. Knicks fan can. Bro, can take over a nation by itself, no yes. weapons. Just the audacity <laughs> of being a diehard Knicks fan is enough to topple any ain't, regime, ain't bro. Ain't won a championship since 73. They hungry for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, that, that to me was insane. Recent statistic came out. One in 24 New Yorkers is now a millionaire. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? First of all, it's the number one market for so many things. Number one media market, number one economic market in the world. Not, the, not the country, the world. The world. The, the other part of that is they have, like, regardless of whatever racial, cultural, religious tensions and differences they have, like you said, New York is New York. So they understand cooperative economics on a level that most Americans will never, Preach. ever get. Preach. Right? Here's the thing. Like, I, I got um, Gary Vee is a friend of mine, will always be a friend of mine. Right? Gary Vee is a Russian Jew. When I started. I love to meet Gary Vee. Can you hook that up? Bruh, listen, if I could get a hold of him, <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, if you get the a man hold is of busy. Gary the, man, the man is busy, but I, I will tell you this. Um, there were a lot of people when I was trying to do my initiative, Black Boys Win, who told me no. And I'm like, yo, I'm just 15 grand short of this situation. Yeah. The next day, that money was in my account. Right. No questions. Yeah, no was, was no it kind of like a. Uh, you familiar with The Wire? Yes. Like when uh, when uh, when Cuddy was coming to Avon and he's like, yeah, we got the gold package. You know what I'm saying? You want to give a little more? And he was like, Avon was like, all right, man, I don't need all these brochures and shit. It wasn't how even that. How much money is it? He's like, oh. he's like ten thousand. He was like, give him fifteen. Like, I, is that how easy it was? It was easier than that. <laughs> I just wanted like, because first of all, he, quick story. When I started moving, because black people can't believe a black man talks the way that I talk and do the things that I do. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, you the black Gary Vee? No, I'm Dave <laughs> Anderson. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Don't compare me. I hate black derivatives, yeah. right? Um, and so I got sick of, like, the 30th person told me I reminded them of, black Gar uh, of a black Gary Vee. And the first thing I said was, who the hell is Gary Vee and why should I care? The next thing I did was I Googled him. <laughs> then I went and bought his books. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I can see it. And then that 31st person caught me on a day where I was having a really bad day. And he was like, yo, man, I like all that stuff you're doing, man. It's much better than that radio stuff, man. You the black Gary Vee. And I said, all right, man, thanks. And I hung up the phone. And I picked it back up. And I... 
<laughs> let my thought got on the internet and I was just hot. And I said, I am not the hashtag uh, <laughs> at Black Gary V. Yeah. At Gary V. Let me be great on my own. I am nobody, I'm no white man's derivative. Boop. Next day, my assistant gets a call from Tyler and was like, yo, um, does he have a podcast? <laughs> my assistant was like, my assistant at the time was like, yeah, he does. Well, um, Gary wants to do his podcast. I'm like, the fuck? What did I do? I'm like, oh, shit. Now I got to <laughs> deal with this white man. and this, He's going to be mad. <laughs> it's going to be a whole thing. And we're talking, and I'm asking him questions, because at that particular point, I was the only person that was bold enough to ask him about what happened with Shea Moisture and that whole situation with Rich Lou Dennis and all that good yeah. stuff. And he gave me an answer. And like I was like, okay, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And he had... I hate it when people have an answer for everything when it's not genuine, but he literally, literally had an answer for things. And it's just like, you ever see Batman and Superman where it's like, Martha. It's yeah. like, my mom's <laughs> name my Martha, Martha too. How like, do you know Martha? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's what it was. But here's the thing. So we're having this good conversation. I'm like, okay, cool. I can dig it. But while I'm waiting, there's two things that I noticed. Number one, his staff is very culturally diverse. He's got sisters in there with locks down their back. Yeah. He's got Asian people in there. Everybody's everything. That tells and you a lot because that, he's he. That means he's into people and not archetype. He wants the best person for the job. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I want the best person for the job, and I'm praying to find the best black person for the job. See how that works, Umar. <laughs> anyway, so at the end of the interview, I said, "Listen, I got a question for you because I'm running into a roadblock." He was like, "Well, what is it?" And I'm like, "Well." I'm doing this initiative to help black boys, like a supplemental educational thing like EDX or Khan Academy, but specifically for black boys. Yeah. See how that works, Umar? <laughs> anyway, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm short, and I'm trying to figure out fundraising strategies that, like, because crowdfunding ain't working for me to stand in third. Yeah. And he was like, okay, but all right, well, how much are you trying to raise? And I said, 15 grand or so. He was like, okay. I'm like, excuse me, what? Give you the 15 grand. Yeah. Okay, but what? No strings, no nothing. I'm yeah, it's like you, you, you have you have a program. I ha you need money. That I have the end solution, which is the money. Here's the money. Here's the money. And his accountant shot me an email that money was in my account the next day. Did that interaction um change your perception of how you uh like view money and finances and shit like that when it comes to business? I just asked because on the whole, right? Mm -hmm. Black people have a a super duper scarcity mindset yes. when it comes to money yes. because a lot of us grow up poor, grow mm -hmm. up without having, grow up having to sacrifice and shit like that. So it spoils our relationship with money where we don't understand that money is everlasting and it flows in abundance. It's currency. It's, it's currency. That's why and it's, it's called like, currency. Yeah, and it's like if you, if you do the right things and you follow your passion and you build an industry around something that you have an expertise or a passion in, the money will find you. Yeah. It's usually just about sticking in the industry long enough for for the for the business for the economics to develop around what the fuck you're doing, yeah, for me it didn't change my mindset about money because you know I worked in my father's corner store when I was seven years yeah. old and then I swept up hair in my mom's salon when I was thirteen. What it did do for me is show me that we have a jacked up relationship with money. Bingo. And the other part of that is we. My mom says this, and my mother you know, is a Cheney graduate and she's also a University of Penn. Um, she holds a, a degree from the University of Penn. So she's an Ivy League educated woman as well as an HBCU educated woman. Yeah. And she says the problem with our people, not everybody, but too many of us for it to be a coincidence, is that we don't mind you doing good as long as you ain't doing gooder than me. Exactly. And that's the thing. If I can attach my dollar to your success, then that somehow is going to diminish my success. And... We are so afraid that somebody's going to get there before us. And guess what? Some people should get there before Absolutely. You, and they should pave the way Some for you. Some people should be the, 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 the flag planners and the, the, the ones that are putting the load-bearing right. fucking steel in the ground. Right. There's the, before there are settlers, somebody <laughs> has to come and pioneer that land yeah. and settle it. And that's what people don't understand. And for me, it was like, yo, he just did that so easily. And there were times, because I was still coming up, there were times when things were happening and I needed advice, and the people I would normally turn to weren't there for whatever reason. Yeah. And I could pick up the phone, and I, I could hit him and be like, yo, gee, this is what's going on, bop, bop, bop. He's like, all right, do this, do that, do this, do that. All right, talk to you later. Boom, right? The other part of that is I realized that we spend way too much time spending way too much time, right? Yeah. And so, I, so much prep and getting ready to do something instead of just fucking doing it. I'm like, 
that when there are times when I'm like, yo, I need to sit down with Gary. And it's been a couple years since I sat down with Gary because he's off doing V Friends and he's got this brand new book. Go get it. I got it. It's dope. But the thing of it is when he does have time, it's usually 15 minutes. But those 15 minutes make me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. If not more. Because he has an insight and he understands certain things. And he is, Gary V is everything Grant Cardone claims to be. Got it. He understands the immigrant experience from a minority perspective. He never claims that he understands what it means to be black, but he understands that when you're a minority and people do things like, I don't know, piss in a Pepsi can and then tell you to drink it because you don't speak <laughs> the language yet. Like you, you get certain things. Yeah. He gets that and what he doesn't get, he has people around him who get. And and so for me, it, it it allowed me to change everything. That day, when I got that check, and I was able to create programs and day camps, and you know we're still doing work now. Um, the other thing that happened was I was never ever again afraid to just straight up ask for the money, and my rates went up. Because I realized what the time was, because while I was there, he was like, yeah, we're doing this 4D thing. I said, what's 4D? It's a, it's a daily digital deep dive. And for 10 grand, you get to spend eight hours with us. And we go through your entire business, soup to nuts, this, that, and the third. I'm like, 10 grand for eight hours? Right. Now, like 10 grand in a phone call is, is not a big deal. Yeah. But in order for us to understand something as a, as a people, we have to see it outside of the normal realm of oh, basketball, rapper, singer, manager of basketball, player, rapper, singer. Yeah, I had, a, I, was, I had a business plan I was putting together and um, I had a, a, for like prospective investors for something that I'm trying to build. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine in dance, Kev Doce, looked at it and he was like, you, you flipped here, this is too much leverage, don't do that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. it, 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 it took him 10 minutes to analyze the whole shit, but he's like, other than that, you got exactly what you need. Right, because it would take taking you days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If not weeks to figure it out. Because I'm sitting here just, after a while, when you're done something, and you're just staring at it, and you're just like, mm -hmm. is it smudged? Is it, like, you're looking at the picture trying to find right. imperfections. Yeah, you're looking at it like, oh and my gosh. And it's like, gosh. instead of understanding that, this just needs a fresh set of eyes. That's all it needs. That's all it needs. You cannot see the picture when the, when you're in the frame. And the other part of that is, and this one people ain't going to like, because the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial community is going to be like, he's crazy. I stopped writing business plans. Here's why. Think about how many times you've heard somebody, right? And I, I'm saying this unequivocally. If I'm wrong, correct me. Yeah. But you've heard of somebody, they had this idea, they, go, they have a business plan, they go to a bank or they go to a, a hedge fund or they go to a, a consortium or an angel investor, and the next thing you know, they say, yeah, nah, um, it's not the right time. It's not the right fit. It's not the right thing. Six months later, yeah, they that take very your whole shit. Why am I going to give you my blueprint? Yeah, when unless you having them sign NDAs and saying that this information is proprietary is pointless. Absolutely. Salehi Bembry, who was um, he's one of the big wigs at he's at Crocs now, Crocs yeah. Footwear, mm -hmm. and he's reimagining all this stuff. He's at New Balance. He once upon a time was at he was doing Versace's footwear. Mm -hmm. Young black brother, or whatever. I actually right. met him in LA a couple of years ago, and he wrote, um, he wrote a, a random like email mm -hmm. to fucking Donatella Versace. Right. You have opportunities in footwear that you can't even imagine. I come up with a, with some sketches. This is this is and this. She hit him back in like eight hours. Yo, when can you come to Milan to talk about these opportunities? Boom, 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 boom. He said, I have this theory. Dex get checks. I show up. I do my presentation. Woo, woo, woo. I'm the creative director of Versace's Footwear. Facts. It was he said it was that easy. Facts. He said, but I keep various decks and presentations around well, for different absolutely. stuff because you never know. Right. Decks are great. Yeah. Business plans, no sir. Yeah. Business plans are are outdated. And the deck leaves with me. Yeah. You don't hold on to this. Yeah, it's and all, if you do, it's this, an NDA. All this information is proprietary. All day. And my my whole thing is, and I tell this to people all the time, with with any type of NDA, you need to have a penalty. There needs to be a penalty in there. And that penalty yeah. needs to be at least twice that person's potential net worth. Right. That way they don't break your NDA. Yeah. Because too many of us, like, the greatest place of having ideas is in the black community. It is the richest place, second only to the graveyard. Yeah. But we don't have access to resources. And I'm not just talking capital. I'm talking about the eyeballs, the ears, and the ingenuity to make it happen. And we got to start looking within. You know, and we got to start realizing that there's things we need to do. Nate Parker would be one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Man. Had he just signed with Byron Allen. Had he just Man. signed with Byron Allen. 
I don't care what nobody says. But again, them tentacles. Yeah. Uh, wrap it up. Sure. The Iranian president dying from a helicopter crash is uh did so, did somebody hit him with a missile or does that is that a legitimate crash? I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> you know, if I, you I, had to guess. It seems suspicious. Considering the, what's going, considering what's going on in the Middle East right now, it seems suspicious. To quote a, a young man named Jermaine Shoemaker, "You don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious." <laughs> Listen, man, the timing the, of it, everything. Was we're like, so desensitized. <laughs> we are so desensitized. Like, how did the president of fucking Iran just die? And motherfuckers like, "Oh yeah, it was a helicopter crash." Like, ain't nobody asking. No, ain't nobody got no follow up questions. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> like. I've seen Russell Simmons wrap up Def Jam messier than the way they wrap this thing up. Thanks for coming out, God bless you. Good night. Like, you got to remember that now we don't pay attention to anything. There's a thing that I learned from a woman named Dr. Sari Thomas when I was at Temple University. It's called cultural lagging. They put things in the media. They put things in your entertainment so that by the time it actually hits, it's so commonplace you don't bat an eye. Right. In 1995, they were talking about Dolly the Sheep because she was cloned. Now, you got clone meat sitting in your daggone supermarket. Eh, you know, and you just got to figure out which ones are non-GMO. Right. That's what that, do you know GMO? <laughs> Genetically you modified organism. organism. <laughs> do you know what that means? It's the clones. <laughs> it's the cl Send in the clones. Yes. So Coons not paying attention to clones, but then you got these ding-dongs on, on TikTok talking about, they got magnetic chicken. Like, bro. <laughs> Y'all pay attention. What was the to shit about the snow? <laughs> it was like the snow had a magnet. It was like some shit with snow last winter that they was going around. They like, look at this snow. You ever seen snow to do? I'm just like, what the fuck? What am I watching? Like at some millions point, of views, yeah, millions. Like y'all not paying attention to anything. But when Prince started to tell y'all about the chemtrails, y'all said he's just crazy and eccentric because he wears ruffles and high heels and can still take your chick. Um, <laughs> we're, we're paying attention to the wrong conspiracies because the right conspiracies aren't hitting you. There's a guy who does business in in the United States lives in the UK and he says no matter what I do anytime I come to the States I automatically gain like five ten pounds and then I come back and I come home and I eat the same pasta and pizza and foods that I eat in the US and automatically I, I, I lose the weight what are they putting in the food in the States and I mean yeah, steroids, you know, car steroids carcinogens Right, all type of growth hormone, this, that, and the third. Chemicals. Right, but then you got these ding dongs talking about y'all. Y'all drinking water? Y'all drinking water? Don't you drink ain't water. To drink no you're water. To eat the water. You Peace to, to the gods water. and the earths. You supposed and the to get your water out of watermelon. <laughs> I said, damn, I said, yo, we've reached the point in black consciousness where we slander in water now. Water is the thing. If you drink mad at water, you low vibrational. Cause you cause uh, cause a camel drink water. You human being, you man, you a god on earth. You supposed to eat water. No, no, first of all, it's not, it's it's, it's not, <laughs> Chad, I'm gonna stop you right there. There's gonna be truth in this interview. Because because this is the year of truth. Um, it's not Earth, E-A-R-T-H, it's Earth. Earth. Peace to the gods and the <laughs> Earth. Earth. E A R F F F F S. It's like Earth. there's certain misinformation. I love this consciousness <laughs> suck attach. I love it. Can y'all teach me? Is there a course I can buy? Can you just get them all in a room? Like, let me know where I can get the moon and stars crown so that y'all can start listening to me seriously. Tell me where I can get a wool hat in the middle of the summer so that y'all can believe this hotep bullshit when I'm trying to teach y'all that the best way you're not gonna nobody. Listen, let me bring it back. I'm trying to. You almost got me. Uh, yeah. No, no, nobody. Okay, listen. I'm gonna do this calm. We'll be here all night, but I'm gonna. You gonna get this shit calm? You're nobody. Nobody is going to make a racist white person, Asian person, um, non-foundational Black American person change their beliefs like there's some type of non-ethnic who in Whoville whose grinchy heart grew three times that day. If you want equality, start getting some equity, you dumb, stupid clucks. Please find a way to take what it is you have in here and in here and get famous at the bank. 
That is the only place you need to be well known. But y'all are sitting up here giving away clicks for clout. You're figuring out all of this stuff because you just want to believe and you don't want to have the pressure of leading yourself. So you look to these leading blacks like my good friend, the late Julia Hare used to talk about. But now the leading blacks have 17, 13, 19 uh, keys to success and they're, they're, they're <laughs> running around, you know, talking about, you know, leisure activities that they've earned and I'm still trying to figure out for the life of me at what point are we really going to invest in ourselves beyond a fest at what point are we going to stop giving podcast equipment to any ding dong at a staples who has an amazon account and sitting down and listening to people talk about things they've never ever done yeah I, I don't get it. But y'all y'all like that because that's junk food and I'm sitting up here like Brussels sprouts and y'all know that I make you piss stink. It's okay. <laughs> but at some point, we're going to have to get past this stupid shit. And, yeah. and, and, and that's the thing to me. But when we start telling me that you, like an animal, you, you're, you're <laughs> drinking water like an animal. Well, God, but, you but, ain't but, no animal. But, but can I ask you a question? If, that, if you're a God, then, then explain to me if you're a God, right? And you truly believe that and you believe that that action is animalistic, then why are you wearing clothing? Because if one thing is animalistic, yeah. and animals don't have clothes unless yeah, no, 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 no. You, you, you being too literal. You applying it wrong, King. Oh, that's what it is. Like, see, my chakras <laughs> is out of alignment. Yeah, you know wrong, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, bro. You got the wrong mathematics. Yeah, that's that's the problem. I, I you ain't got to realign. I got to realign and, and learn how to see. That's why I got to sit down with with the dude with the crown and and, and, and Professor Griff's uh Professor Griff's um S one W uniform so that I can learn how to how to, how to learn and, and then download the information. What kind of mess is that? <laughs> and then the old boy who sold the black house after scamming black people for eleven point five million dollars. Oh, uh, uh, Jay was, Morrison. Yeah, I think that's his name. I don't know. Jay the Morrison, the nigga yeah. from New Jersey, the the black Tulsa yeah, fund. Yeah, yeah, the Tulsa real estate fund. That's yeah, what it, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. He because he was on the street corner teaching people financial literacy. They could have got on a Google search, and, <laughs> you know, at a Starbucks, and. Y'all fell for it because yet another financial person sat up there and told you it was a good investment. What happened to the eleven point five million, boys? What happened, boys? Boys, real quiet. Have y'all? I'm sorry. Can, can we? <laughs> Someone please call nine one one. Where's Boys Boys Watkins? Because I ain't heard him talk about. I ain't heard him talk about shit. No, but he's got time to talk about O'Shea Duke Jackson, who's a phenomenal YouTuber, because he said some things about boys he didn't like. But you don't have time to talk about oh, Boys Boys. Moist Thotkins. Um, <laughs> but you don't have time to talk about how Jay Morrison like scammed so many people. And people are like, you're not investing in the Tulsa real estate fund? Here's no. the, here's the here, no. two things. One, yeah. certain levels of misinformation should get you kicked off the internet. If you say that you're not supposed to drink water, you should get kicked <laughs> off the internet. That's what first. That? So that, we drinking Kool-Aid? Yeah, it's like, what the, like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, we had David Koresh. Water. We had David Koresh house. You, <laughs> Jim yeah, Jones like, and not the rapper. Yeah, we're tripping. So, so that's the first thing. Okay. Secondarily, Nobody is staying in their fucking lane no more. No. And when I met Dr. Boyce Watkins, mm -hmm. smart brother, yes. great story, uh, tenure professor at the time, I think at Syracuse, the whole nine, mm -hmm. economics professor, had sure. some great ideas, put me on to uh, Dr. Claude Anderson and, and him and all of that. I learned a lot from Dr. Boyce Watkins. Absolutely. Um, seeing him on those Breakfast Club appearances. Sure. And at some point, when you start to extend the content window past a one hour appearance and you start to see the editorial POV that these guys create around their platforms. If there's nothing to talk about, they got to find something to talk about. Right. So then you start having them and not everybody's good at this shit. Not everybody's fucking me or you where they, right. we could talk about any and everything right. for hours. But I relate everything back to business because <laughs> I'm a business guy. Yeah. See how that works, Umar? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Boys, so so I you have somebody my, like Boyce to where it's like, yo, as the content train it extends from one car to two cars to three cars to now we have a whole fucking caboose. Now, some of these cars on this train are dragging it instead of helping, instead of serving a purpose. And the more he talked, the more he exposed himself because this is. What happens with these fucking microphones, mm -hmm. they're tools. You can use it to amplify a message or you can use it to fucking end up crafting the the, the hammer or whatever that knocks you upside your fucking head. Right. And because of that, he's lost so much credibility even back to his original thing, which was, was economics and business. Right. 
So once you prove to be invalid in all of these other areas to where it started to affect your bread and butter, it's like, well, was it worth it to build this whole content train out mm -hmm. just for the simple fact of monetization when now you've invalidated your whole platform over time and you did it? Nobody right. did it to you. You did right. it to yourself. But the, the, the thing about that is, and listen... Sometimes you got to look at a situation and realize that there's certain people who are just going to do whatever they want to do. What happened to Vicky Dillard? That's a good question. Oh, could, could it be allegedly that um, Boyce took the money from her and ran? Could, could that be it? That could, could, could be could, it. Could it be a situation where a woman who is dealing with a whole lot of uh, physical ailments wasn't paying attention to the way you were cooking the books? And once she discovered that, maybe, just maybe, um, she called you out on it the same way Tupac might have allegedly called out Suge and said, hey, you know, you're doing this and you're still earning money and and I'm not getting a cut of what it is that you're earning. This goes beyond the agreement when I came back to the whole Fly Nubian Queen thing. I, I, I just wonder why he's so silent on that, but so many so vocal on so many other issues. Yeah, I, I find that troubling because my whole thing is if you're if you're B1, last I checked, Vicki Dillard's an unmistakable black woman. Yes. Vicki Dillard is dealing with an issue. So you're dealing with a woman that has health problems. So you're dealing with basically a, a handicapped black woman. And right. I mean that from a physical standpoint, yeah, yeah, yeah. no dis or disrespect yeah, to that yeah, yeah. lady. Brilliant woman. Brilliant woman who has exposed a lot of stuff and went toe to toe with RFK Jr. and left him stuttering, which I mean, granted, yeah. <laughs> That's a hard thing to That's do. That's a hard thing to do. You know, he, he, he a little out there, but he, he's sharp as he's sharp, sharp as a tack. And, and my whole thing is, why wouldn't you want to do absolutely everything to make that woman whole? And if she felt that way and she was wrong, why didn't you give her the evidence to correct yeah. that? But but now that's okay. But if we're going to protect black women, let's start with Vicki Dillard, boys. Yeah. Th those are my views. Right. I could be wrong. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I don't know anything about the man. And, you know, he's been running for me for years, so... <laughs> I mean, you know, seeing him transform himself from, you know, this uh, astute economics guy, very sharp, to basically being like the biggest black cuck on the internet is just like a strange trajectory. And it's just like, you know, the more you talk, the more, you know, you just kind of sunk the shovel into the ground and just continue to just bury yourself more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And you did it to yourself. But, but my whole thing is you can know a tree from the fruit that it bears. What fruit has he has he bore? The black Zero. The, the black business school? Oh, didn't Charles Wu create that? And wasn't Boyce a quote um um pro prolific black um militant character? But wasn't that what Charles Wu said? Something <laughs> along those lines? So you let an uh, why we still talk about Charles Wu? Because you let an Asian man put his hand up your butt like the daggone conscious yeah. financial Kermit the Frog, and you let him rock with that. And then you tried to grandstand on him, but the, the damage was done. But people who believe, and that's the thing with a lot of these people who may or may not be grifters, people who side with them will side with them regardless of the evidence. Yeah. It's like they, they've done psychological studies where you're tell, telling somebody, hey, this is wrong, and here's why, and here's the data. Right. <laughs> I don't care what that says. I don't Fuck believe it anyway. Fuck the data. Like, you know, um, is you that an inherently black thing? I think, it's a, I think it's an inherently human thing, but with black people, it's just a lot more prevalent because we say it with so much swag. Loud and proud. The other part of that is like, you know. Strong and wrong, as, like as my, my grandmother is, says. The, 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 the racist, to me, the more racist thing is the guy who wrote a crime bill, said we were super predators, locked, and, and has continued to reverberate. One out of three African-American males will do prison time for nonviolent offenses versus the guy who was in for four years, who when Arsenio Hall got taken off the air, allegedly for having Minister Louis Farrakhan on there, um, you fast forward 20 some odd years later and he won the Celebrity Apprentice. There was somebody who went and got him his show back. That same person is also an NAACP Image Award winner. That same person, when Jesse Jackson was running as a Democrat, not once but twice, had fundraisers for him at Mar-a-Lago is now the orange man bad. He's the logo man. for racism. He's the logo for racism. <laughs> but the but the actual mentee of Strom Thurmond and Robert Byrd, one of which is a card-carrying segregationist racist, and the other one was a grand cyclops in the Ku Klux Klan who got eulogized by the same man, yeah. is somehow a friend of black people. I, I just want to know how that works. Yeah. Because he's bad and he's <laughs> he's gonna call no more mean tweets. <laughs> I, I don't listen. I don't care about your. We tweets. have to end the mean tweets. <laughs> but but you you you. But again, what war happened under that man? None. Up until 2019, we averted a fucking war with Russia. That part. Up until 2019, how was the economy? Booming. 
Oh, okay. So any president, because whoever was the president when the Spanish flu hit, what happened right after the Spanish flu? Yeah, fucking uh, decimated economy. Yeah, it's called the Great Depression. Yeah. For those of you who don't <laughs> like history. Um, yeah. So whoever sits in that chair, yeah, you know, in that oval is, is, is going to face that. But up until then, you can't argue with that. And America is a corporation. I'm not saying go vote for Trump. I'm not on that. What I am on is if Trump is a racist, then Biden's a super racist. Right. Even Kamala Harris was like, you oppose busing, and I'll never forgive you for that because I was on the second class of the people that you opposed. Da, 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 da. All of a sudden, he goes from that and all that vitriol and bop, bop, bop. To, Joe, <laughs> we did it, Joe. <laughs> this has been masterful. Um, really? I just, I don't know. I just got to have you come back. Uh, you know, every couple of months, man, just to right. recalibrate the culture. Last question. <laughs> You're a voracious reader. Who's read more books? You or Cat Williams? In reality? <laughs> in reality. On Earth in this dimension? <laughs> yes. On Earth 616? <laughs> yes. I, I, I try to read, I, I would say, um, one to two books a day. Sometimes I fall short. Yeah. But even if I fall short, I'm still killing most CEOs because the average CEO is about 10, 14 books a year. Yeah. You know, um, again, full disclosure, you don't need to read every page. There's executive summaries, right? There is audible. You can get on the treadmill. There's a, there's a million and one ways to learn information and yes. none of them are wrong. And a lot of information, and this is why I love audible and, and audio books so much as a medium is mm -hmm. because hearing something supplants information in your subconscious mm -hmm. where it might be in, you might not be receiving it in your like frontal lobe as it's happening. But then when you get into a scenario where you have to recall that information, it's there. Here's the thing, right? Show of hands. Who's read the Bible? I've read it a long, long time ago. But you've read it. Yeah. Cool. Long, long, long time I ago. I bet you, you know more from what your pastor has said if you go to church. But people listen to what the pastor says more than they actually read the book themselves. There's something about hearing. There's something about experiencing something yes. versus reading it. That's why a lot of people don't like to read. It, it, it takes a certain level of discipline. And my whole thing is I don't care how you get the information. I care that you get the information. Exactly. And you can pull from it. Um, I, I think Cat is incredible. He's arguably um, a thinking man's comedian. To me, right now, my top two working comedians are Andrew Schultz and Cat Williams. And I'm not a fan. Of, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a fan of these last couple specials Cat's put out. I, I think he's. Yeah, I didn't. Good. I didn't. Um, I like the one. It was probably four years ago at this point. I like that one better than this new one. Mm -hmm. There's kind of like nothing here in this current one. It's no. like it's no, it's nothing to pull from. But what and if, I'm a super cat fan. What if? And again, let, let me put on my tinfoil coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I can borrow Umar's. <laughs> um, I don't know any of these people with the Earths. I can't. Jesus Christ. Um, let's say that you're Cat Williams, and let's say you've got a captive audience, and let's say that everybody's going to be watching your situation regardless, because your deal with Netflix is your deal with Netflix. It's locked in, signed in. Everybody's yeah. gotten paid. Am I going to waste that time trying to be funny or am I going to waste that time pointing out the fallacies of what's happening in our world in a yeah, way it's like, uh, where people don't, n don't realize they're being it's, educated? It's more social commentary than comedy at mm -hmm. this point. Right. And, and I'm okay with that. You want to know why? George Carlin did it. Yeah, George Carlin was amazing. Lenny Bruce did it. Andrew Schultz is doing it. Yeah. And I think... I think he's doing it better than anybody right he's, now. He, because he's you, he his ability to take cultural moments and whip up bits about them almost in real time yeah. is unprecedented. Here's the thing. People told me, and, and um, of course I met Andrew through, through Charlemagne. Um, I did Brilliant Idiots a couple of times. People told, oh, well, Schultz is a racist and Schultz is this and Schultz is that. And I'm like, all right, I hear you. And then when I met him, I'm like, oh, you're Lenny Bruce. Yeah. Like you just turn motherfuckers on their head, but you do it for everybody yeah you know and i'm sorry this is the problem with this puff pastry gen z safe space 17th place trophy bs comedy is supposed to upset you supposed to upset and offend. make you think and he's doing a phenomenal job of that and yeah. like if you have not been to an andrew schultz show you're doing yourself a disservice like dude's, yeah. dude's phenomenal like 
absolutely phenomenal. But I think that's where comedy needs to go. And comedy needs a reset. But I'm going to need black people to stop being so afraid that you're going to mess up your bag. The problem with most black comedians, and I challenge any black comedian, and I know 90% of you, any black comedian to tell me where I'm wrong. You're waiting for somebody, some white man or somebody else to put you on, to book you, to hire mm -hmm. you, to do this, that, and the third. You know, when Netflix was doing that situation with Monique, you know, I called Rodney Perry, you know, who's a good friend of Monique. Shout out Rodney Perry. Shout out, shout out to Uncle Rodney. Uncle Rodney was the one that told me that I, whatever I do, don't ever stop writing books. And I said, why? He said, because it'll make you an instant expert. But I digress. I, I said to him, I said, Rodney, hell with Netflix. This is what Monique needs to do. First thing she needs to do is do what Conan O'Brien did. Oh, I can't be on TV for six months? Let's book every venue. You got an Oscar. <laughs> Black women love you. You dive deep into your base and say, I'm doing the first ever Monique Big Black Balls tour. And you put big black balls on the table. Since you being black ball, you might as well have the biggest ones. Right. right? And then you run that situation over and over and over again until you got that special refined. Then you take the best of that. You do it one night in the biggest venue you could possibly mm -hmm. do on the last day of the tour. And that's your special. And Netflix or Hulu or somebody. Buy it from you. Will buy it from you. Again, people, I, I'm not saying that I'm right about everything, but I get paid a significant amount of, uh, yeah. of money to be right. They did not want to listen to me. And sometimes when people don't want to listen to me, you get what you get. But I think that would have been a better play because it had precedent and it had legs and it would have shown them what a mistake they made by disrespecting one of our icons. Yeah. And to that point, um, ending on Schultz, Schultz was smart enough to say, I'm going to do all of these dates. He was he was working like a fool all the time, all the time. He was mm -hmm. doing seven, eight dates a weekend yep. in between doing two podcasts and whatever other correspondent work he was doing. Mm -hmm. He got to the point where he created this groundswell, shot his special. He owned it, yep. sold it to a streaming service. Mm -hmm. They wanted to compromise the shit so much. He felt like it was going to lose its context. He bought it back, back from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Went direct to consumer yep. on his website yep. for two weeks. Yep. Made three times the amount of money mm -hmm. that it cost him to buy the special back. Mm. And now he's cemented in comedy history because he's the first. No, no, no. He's cemented in comedy history because he's a white man. No, he's cemented <laughs> in comedy history because he bet on himself. See how that works, black people? Bet on yourself. And I'm not saying that, oh, it's because it's the white man. I don't give a... If he was a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater and did it, bet on yourself. Like, that's what it is. Prince bet on himself. Sony was like, oh, we own the name Prince and you can't make another record? All right, cool. Say no more. No problem. Legal and, loophole, dickheads. And not only that, <laughs> you do realize that there was a period where Prince sat at home for three years and they said, but you're just going to sit up. As long as you ain't getting the money, I'm good. Y'all can't do that because you value a bag. Yeah. You got to get your... the, the new Rolls Royce. They just put out the Cullen in two. <laughs> what the fuck I'm supposed to do? Don't you see the big body? <laughs> like, Chad, I... They put out the EQS. They got the electric Maybach. How long am I supposed to just sit at home and not have the electric Maybach? I got to go make these white people money. Bro, I will always bet on myself because I will tell you sometimes uh, I'll take a break from whatever it is I'm doing. Yeah. Go help somebody do something. And I'll be like, oh, you know, this will be cool. I can do this. Yeah. And, you know. I got to do my thing my way because it's the only way I can keep from being me. My wife says to me one time, this is years ago, before Gary V, years ago, Comcast, because I was selling like a beast. I'm like, I'm a real good sales guy. Yeah. Comcast was like, yo, we'll give you 100K plus um, commissions. And I was like, yo, this is crazy money. And my wife was like, very similar to what... Um, what Regina, uh, Regina King told Cuba Gooding Jr. and Jerry Maguire, like, nah. And I said, but we need this money. Right. What the, the fuck are you talking about? Nah, because here's what's going to happen. One, you're going to get there and you're going to be miserable because the whole time you're going to be looking out the window. You'll close deals. You'll do your job. But you're going to be looking out the window like, yo, I should be out there on somebody's stage writing some books, building a business. Yeah. Right? Or you get there and it goes great. And then somebody comes to you one day like they did at Nutrisystem or like they did at ADT or like they did at iHeart and say, hey, tell us about this and that and that and this. And you'll give it to them on the promise that they're going to give you something in return, and like a position. And promise will third, never be. And it'll fulfilled. never be fulfilled. Yeah. I was, I was. And doing, now you'll, be re you'll have a resentment. Mm -hmm. Like I did with the SEPTA app, which I invented. Yeah, you told me about that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the, the thing of it is, she was like, 
I don't know how, because this ain't my lane, but you got to find a way to make this shit work. Otherwise, I'm not dealing with the fact that you're going to be miserable behind doing something you ain't got no business doing. That's a good woman. God damn. Bruh. Shout listen, out Mrs. Anderson. All day, every day, six times on Sunday. <laughs> and I, I tell her all the time, I'm so sorry for every time I fell short, every time I got upset, every time my little creative shit got in the way yeah. or whatever. Because, I mean, yeah. we're all weirdos. Yeah. You got to be to do this. You have to have your idiosyncrasies in order to create at a high level. Right. And, and that's just what it is. Like, I don't like certain sounds. Like, turn that goddamn phone down. Like, like we all got Bruh. our shit. But I'm glad you said that because I tell my 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 girl this and she don't. I'm just like like why is your phone always on silent? I hate the way this the camera. Yeah. Hi, hi Chad's girl, Dave Anderson here. Um, genius has a trade off. We got quirks. Guys, a genius. I hate the fucking phone. I hate the fucking phone. We all hate. I hate it. You know what I'm saying? My daughter don't like it when I chew. She can't stand the sound of me chewing. Yeah. My daughter's a genius. She's doing algebra and, and wrapping up Spanish and about to move to, to Mandarin. Right. Like, she paints. Like, it's, I can't keep a canvas yeah. in the house. It's the cost of doing business. It's the cost of doing business. <laughs> genius has a trade-off. If you want to go ahead and be cool and be regular, not Chad's girl, not everybody. If you want to go ahead and be cool and be regular, do you realize that being cool is compromised with really good pre PR? It's mediocrity. It is conformity with an agent. That's what it is. If no being problem. cool means I get to be like you regular, regular nine to five cubicle jockey Negroes who think you're doing something because you're on your corporate hustle, that's your business. And I mean, I respect you for it, but you're nuttier than hooker spit and I'm not going for it. So let me have my, my realm of genius. You have your realm of mediocrity and never the twain shall meet. But listen, if you want this, you want... You're going to get this weird work. <laughs> That's just what it is. Because I've had clients find me like, why are you telling me to do that? That'll never work. And then when it works. Yeah. Because now I've realized I, I didn't hack this, right? Yeah. If people don't want to listen to you, be like, okay, cool. Two things I do. Number one, I'll put up money. But like, listen, if it don't work, I'll give you five grand. Right? right. Or two, you don't like my mouth. You don't like being embarrassed in this group coaching situation. Do what I'm asking you to do in spite of me. If it works... Yeah, you, you win and I shut the fuck up. You win and I shut the fuck up. <laughs> but if it doesn't, then I got to fix it. Now, you go off and do what you want to do, then you get to hear my mouth. See how simple that is? Yeah, That's shut me it. up. Shut me up. Prove me wrong. Dave That's Anderson. <laughs> brother. Masterful performances, you And I want to thank all 300 of you <laughs> who watched watch. this interview because I'm not Umar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm working on getting my dashiki. I'm working on. on we, got, we need my, to vlog me taking you to get a dashiki. Yo, we should do that. I swear to you, I will do it. I will do it. Like, am I whole tough enough for you now? Like, you know what I mean? Do I need to run up on somebody? Like, do I need to like run up on 19 keys and punch him for y'all to like? And, and and no diss to the brother Jabril. I'm sure he's a great guy. I've never met the man. I heard he was a piece of shit. Well, but I that's mean, a whole another story. I mean, but you know, when you get together with your little Power Ranger friends and, and steal a concept, when I it's gave morphin' him, time, right? I gave him. I gave another one of your BWO friends that concept and y'all all ran with it how'd that turn out for you oh anyway we're, we're done today so it's <laughs> dave anderson <laughs> my brother my brother i, I hope that you, was sir. all thank right thank you so much man thank you for having me man. rose podcast summer we are